gentlemen, are we all here ready to fucking go? I asked you all a question! As I reveal my giant monkey! That's not as funny as you thought it was, boy! God, I thought he meant penis! I swear, the only thing I hate more than weaklings... Hey! I'm speaking, soldier! Don't fucking speak unless you're smart to fucking nerd! What we're gonna do is we're gonna fly over the fire fire! The talk show at the end of the week. Space is big. Star Citizen Base. It's really big. Round table. Hello everybody! Just took a deep breath because this is gonna be one hell of a round table here on this Sunday. Uh, what? Yeah, Nothing? Okay. We're here on the base radio. Twitch TV slash the base radio. If you're on Shoutcast and you're like, oh cool, well, this is a live show, yeah, then then you can join in by going to twitch.tv slash the base radio is where the chat is and where you can hang out with us. Um it's, Who says yeah. a fan? It's a Shut up! We got many. Wait, this is Marius. Yes, hi. Your mom included. I would have so, to Jesus. I could do that, though. I'm glad I just <laughs> played that <laughs> mature warning because, yeah, this is going to be so mature. Live. Literally live. doing it live. Yep. Well, I think we put a mature warning for the immaturity, which is kind of like an oxymoron or some sort of ironic statement about all of these fucking people here. Except for Joran. He's straight. He's a grown. Is he? I'm old. Where's where's my cane? I shake my cane. <laughs> Get off my spaceship. He's quite a little old, please. Young whippersnappers. So, um... Boost and the only are brothers. Lol. <laughs> This is why I want to see They're just well, a relative. Trying to bring it up now. <laughs> the question is, who's the doppelganger? Is Tio the doppelganger of go. Moose, or is Moose the doppelganger of Tio? We will never know. Don't hurt your brains. Man, they look really chat. similar. Got oh. chat up. Excellent. So, so are you? <laughs> I'm just sending. Me... No. I'm sorry, Ralph. Kind of looks ahead. like that, though, doesn't he? Yes, anyway. Yes. Um. Uh, yeah. Round table here. We have six people on the show like last week. We kind of wanted to go with a four man this week, but we're like, oh god, this control, this, this flight balance remodel, flight, what is it? IFCS rework really brought up some really nasty stuff. So then Gentile was like, oh yeah, we'll get these people on as well. So we can, you know. Favorite have a really fiery what? discussion here. <laughs> I invited <laughs> Dukes just so we could make fun of him. Right? For the amount of salt. <laughs> His dirty ass hat. It's not dirty. What are you talking about? I don't know. We'll put it to the chat. Is Dukes' is hat look like shit or is it just looks like it's been drove, driven over by a truck a couple times? <laughs> Maybe I drive a truck now. This is my new life. This is it's the new from it's from you standing out at Home Depot for that day work job that you. <laughs> That's actually funny. Get it? There uh, are, no, there's actually a bunch of people that'll stand outside those box stores, like looking for like pickup jobs. So we have Joran back. So welcome back to Joran. Hi, hello. Thanks for having me. I like the patch you have. I said that before. Holy crap. Uh, Someone just drove. Or, what? Gotta go fast. <laughs> Gotta go fast. There's a Ducati here in Florida. Fucking so show offs. Here we go. Is that Excellent. better for you? Much better. There's okay. a little bit of delay, but that's okay. Yeah. So, yeah, what? I'm sorry. XLB and Moose are not professional broadcasters, so they're going to talk over people all the time. Oh, of course. That's what I do they're all the they're time. They're all private conversations, so if everything gets all fucking confusing, it's, mm -hmm. it's their fault. Those right? guys. You know that I'll just constantly interrupt you guys. Right? That's fine though. That's what we do here. I'll try and keep it to a minimum. So if I interrupt too much like I'm doing right now, just call me out. Moose, shut the fuck up, man. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, back to the topic at hand. Joran's back. The crowd goes wild. Oh, it's Jordan again. Woo! Who's he gonna and tell the fuck off this? Patch. That's we cool. love him Is from last week. Woo! <laughs> 
Yeah, this, what is the patch? What are we talking about? The, this is Florida Bar Citizen. And um, yeah, we, we came up with that. Uh, one, one of our guys was a really good kind of um, creative graphic gra graphic artist guy and um, came up with that for Florida a couple of years ago with the uh, little tiny Big Binnies on here. Oh, nice. And a, spa and a space shuttle. This is back when Big Binnies was a big deal in 2016. Yeah. It isn't? And the space shuttle even years before that. Yeah, that's what it's what Florida's known for. Big Bennies and uh, space shuttles. Space shuttles, yeah. There's no more space shuttles. No, that's right. Noodles? Uh, <laughs> Florida's known for noodles? That thing closed, right? <laughs> I thought Florida was known for alligators the size of pickup trucks. It's, it's also Florida, known for Florida, man. Florida, it's, Florida's mostly it, known for crazy people and old people. Look, it, it's fall and right now. The same. And it is currently 75 degrees, and I'm cold. It's still hot as hell. It's 74 degrees. Like, what is wrong with you? It's, also it's, 70, there. it's 75 and sunny, and I'm freezing. No, you got something wrong with you, man. Have you tried alligator? I've got to try alligator. What is Alligator's that? a staple. Nice. Fried alligator. Uh, okay, we should introduce the other two as well. Um... They're apparently together in the same room because at first we were like, yeah, we're going to have two guests and uh, it's like, okay, so two extra cameras. No, they're going to be together. Nope. Uh, what? Okay. No, nope, because we live within 30 minutes of each other. Is that right? Mm-hmm. XLB. You guys are better mic than I do and he also has a green screen, so I'm coming over here. I gotcha. Are you guys, you guys are like the tag team fucking dog fighter pilot express bullshit. Right? <laughs> you can't, you can't have you one without the other. Yeah, it's... I was getting that. So, Shit goes down, he calls me up, or vice versa, we're there. With Unless that being live installed and just PTU. Yeah, well. <laughs> well, with that being said, you know, most people know who Joran is. He's the bar citizen guy, right? He's also one of the chairs of the 890 jump club or whatever his title is in the 890 jump captain's thingy. I'm not sure what the title would be, but <laughs> but then again, he's in that. And uh for you guys. Why would anybody care who you are? Who are you? What do you do for Star Citizen? What the fuck are you doing here? Well, for the most part right now, there is like people don't need to care about what we or what we do right now, especially right now with flight the, with the way it is. And we haven't really been flying all that much recently since 3.0 dropped because of how uh, the state of the flight model has been. And with the upcoming changes, it's everything's up in the air right now. So I guess that's Moose's We're response. Back response. He just you know? he just slid the flight model right in there. Just wanted to go right <laughs> into it. It's, oh, it's, 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 it's our it's the, like our favorite thing to talk about. Well, and that's uh, that's what I was gonna say too. You know, uh, I'm I'm trying to break into the streaming uh, scene, uh, but mainly I do want to be that competitive pilot that's known. You know, um, I'm sorry, I'm gonna drop leaderboards down two six three. I I you know hit top ten there briefly. Uh, Moose here is was rank seven. Um, and it's just something that, you know, we want to be the best that we can be. And we, we want to be on that competitive level with, with some of the top pilots. And at the same time, me trying to break into the streaming scene, I want to teach people that want to know how to fly well and do it well and get better. Um, cause at the end of the day, that's all it really matters is what are you, what do you want to do? If you're going to be salty all the time, if you get killed, why not try to improve yourself, reach out to those that know what they're doing and, and, you know, harness what you, what you can do. So that, that's kind of what I am, I guess, what I'm about. Okay, so we'll come around to that back at the end of the show. So that's like a, that's like an open invitation for the community to reach out to Axel B on twitch.tv slash, is it X Lord Belmont or what is the it's Twitch? XLB uh, underscore, underscore SC. SE. XLB underscore SE on Twitch. So you can go to his channel later. You can do that later. And follow him and when he's on you grill him with questions on why you suck so bad as a pilot now i will say before we move on to the next it clown that uh yeah and werewolf actually said earlier jesus christ juntao dupes and the only all lost weight <laughs> yeah that's not that's not true that's not true no that's earlier true. juntao juntao and no, the only like lost me. weight yes that is true but I'm not sure what happened to Dupes. He got an <clears throat> office job, I think. He's not showing it. Off, office job and dad bod. 
So before we get into that, let me say that I remember 2.6.3 with XLB trying to teach me how to pilot and fucking cockpit shotting me every goddamn time. <laughs> and I was so frustrated. I'm like, you fucking prick. Put size ones on that fucking shit. This is bullshit. <laughs> so anyways, he, is a, he, he was back in the day one, a really, really solid fighter pilot. So we'll see what happens. We'll get into the new flight model when that ha when that comes around. Obviously, there's going to be a big learning curve for everybody. So that we'll talk about that in a minute. And then, obviously, most of you who have been around, and if you haven't been around, the football watching guy down there who isn't really going to be paying attention to 90% unless something really snaps in his ears are uh, is who who are you attention. again? Where? My name is Dupes, and I'm where are you from? Florida. Florida. Let's see. How long did I do the show for? Two years, probably. Something like that. I remember. What a waste. Um, I used to be. I used to be a good pilot. Not anymore. I quit playing. I got salty. Play model. Got at Rocket shit. League though. And why are you here? No, I. I would. I would. I would expect. I would hope that uh, Star Citizen gets Rocket League's flight model at this point. I'd be happy with that. Um, I no, I did the base for about two years. Uh, I was a competitive pilot when I used to play a bunch. 1.3 was kind of my heyday, and I, since we moved to 2.0 and 2.6, it's kind of gotten away, and the flights <clears throat> slowly just kept taking steps back. So I've kind of separated myself from the game and just kind of been following it uh, for a while. I mean, I still follow it almost daily, but not not as much as a uh, community involvement as I used to have. So, and most of it revolves around Derek Smart's Twitter. I have. for sure. <laughs> I, he also lives in Florida, so. There's a connection there. I see. Joran also lives in Florida. So you, this is like some kind of fucking conspiracy. Old people earlier. Old people. When, we winter talking is about coming. Florida. Crazy old people there earlier. Crazy Florida. <laughs> hey, that we is have that one of these. We have the crazy person in Dupesims, and we have the older person in Joran. So we're covering the entire okay. demographic of Florida all in one stream. It's great. <laughs> We have Relum, for those of you that don't know Relum, he's on this side. He is the fucking photosphere master of all things crazy screenshots stitched into some sort of 3D fucking madness. It's beautiful you guys see? It is cool, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. very cool. And then you have me, but we're not going to talk about me. Then you have the only, this side. Oh, you're, the, you're the chief asshole. Well, I'm just here to stir the, the pot. The master asshole, back actually, but chief asshole works. See, and then my protege, the only. And that's us. Hi, guys. So, flight model, new. Let's just slide it right in without oh, any... Dive, dive right menu. in. What's the, what's the problem with uh, main thrust-centric flight? <sighs> You want to go first or you want me to go first? Uh, go, go for no, it. No, no. Those who so, descend first. The 15 minutes that we were able to really dive into the 2.4 flight model at SeasonCon, um, what I walked away with was my, my biggest critique was that acceleration was too low. Right now, when I was playing on the, the floor panel, People would try to engage each other, and they'd try to engage in a basic circle strafe. And when it would happen, people would would close the distance, and as they begin to orbit each other, they begin to slingshot away from each other. And this and this partly has to do with the low acceleration. In order for people for uh, pilots to re-engage each other, they have to generate some forward uh, momentum, and it the amount of time it takes to go from the negative momentum that you generate from when you start slingshotting away from each other and start reapproaching i want to say like it took like a good 10 15 seconds for people to chew close distance between a thousand meters and that sweet 500 meters that people wanted to be at. with afterburner with, yes, with afterburner yeah afterburner. and that's right because they changed the um no more booze. Uh, after, after, after afterburner is now yeah. afterburner yeah it's well, afterburner is now afterburner and afterburner after is gone booze. yeah yeah well, afterburner, after, is, afterburner is actually the afterburner like in real life yeah. So, uh, it didn't help that ESP wasn't working the way it should be working, and they went ahead and get, gave a disclaimer before we, we tried out the flight model. So, 
because ESP wasn't working the way it was supposed to, people were having a very hard time, very hard time hitting each other uh, then. Combined with people couldn't get close enough or people couldn't maneuver to get on top of below other people so they can get like the 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 cross section shot or the, the cockpit shot. Um, no one was able to hit each other. Some of these fights are lasting uh, two to five minutes. I, w I uh, engaged uh, one of the AOTW guys and we ended up um, not being mock. able to kill each other. Mock, yeah. was mock. We and, and Jolly was there as well. Yeah, we weren't able to uh, kill each other just because there was so much distance and we couldn't get close enough to land. Any shots didn't help that. We were also using repeaters and I'm not really used to repeaters. Um, both XLB and I are, like to use our cannons. Uh, so there, there'd be inconsistent hits and it wouldn't be doing any damage. Not to really look at that very brief taste that folks got at CitizenCon as really a, a, an example of, okay, well, this is how it's going to be effectiveness at t tier zero of the, of the new flight model. And once they start balancing it, once they, they put it in and I mean, 3.4, uh, I guess that's coming in. I feel about just the change in how, I mean, from a theory standpoint, once it's balanced, ha having your primary thrust be forward and then maneuvering your angle as opposed to having 100% thrust from all of your maneuvering thrusters, being able to go full sideways afterburner just using maneuvering thrusters, I, just as, as a change from the old to the new, and do you have as much of an issue with that as just the the, the brief experiment that you, you got to try at CitizenCon? I, I, mm. so I, I like the idea of the new flight model. The thing is, though, is they have to be able to tune the ships properly, with, That's which is so far yeah. they have not been able to do successfully ever. So <clears throat> like the thing is, like take, for instance, the car to all, right? Although it's got a mate, I mean, it's really got what the four engines or is it two? I don't remember. I think it's four, right? But four, that's known yeah. to have that's known to have like lateral velocity when it comes I, to I, it's multiple it's vectors from straight and going up and down. I, I, so like I that ship, they, that ship should not be drifting as much as say a Gladius or a, or a Hornet that has more of a main centric uh, type of um, silhouette in the way that it's modeled and the way that the engines and the Mavs are set up, right? So should. Should yeah, I, technically, I, I mean, te I, but like that makes sense, right? That's how the Cartwall would technically mm -hmm. want to fly. The Cartwall would be the one that mm -hmm. would be able to dart and knife fight, whereas yeah. maybe the well, that, well, that's what they use more of a rolling pitch, right? Mm -hmm. So, again, they've also said great things before in the past, and I have yet to see them execute it properly. So that's where my salt comes in. I'll believe it when I see it, <laughs> truthfully, because so, like because right now what I see is I see two point six flight model for the most part until if they can actually tune the ships properly. Now they didn't have that new. Uh, tuning tool that they showed off at CitizenCon, so hopefully they can iterate a little bit faster than they used to, where they have to used to just change all the individual in, like individual values and their data forge. Yeah, that was yeah. that was a, that was a big part why tuning took so long because you you know the designers didn't like they put in a value and you, you didn't really know what that value and changing the thrust was on that Mav until you actually then loaded up mm -hmm. the game. So that'll help with the iterative process. So we'll see where it goes, but I'll hold and my breath because. Like I said, they've said a bunch of stuff when it comes to the direction of the flight model. What they're saying is good, but at the same time, too, my biggest problem right now is that they have yet to still talk about the biggest elephant in the room, which is gunnery. Um, to me, they did on RTV. Did you watch RTV? Because they addressed, <laughs> a little bit. They addressed that they understand bit. that it needs a lot of work targeting right. and weapons. But, and, but and I'm, not saying, I'm not saying a lot of work. I'm saying it from a theory standpoint. The way gunnery is set up, it's going to be very hard. Whatever flight model they choose to transition to will benefit one way in the type of aim and the type of controller setup that you have. And that's the inherent issue with my, how I see it as the current flight model. Well, yeah, it'd be great. Now the ships have weight and they'll turn. So now maybe you don't have those vector changes as much. So now if you can't change your vectors quite as much with the... With that, with that purpose type of flight model, then now it becomes more of a DPS where it's time on target. Well, if it's time on target and you have to use a, an aim layer called ESP on joysticks and you can't hit properly, then then that's where more of the gimbal mode comes into play. And if you th think about things like interactive mode and gimbal, if you fly a joystick, you cannot use a type of weapon in the game, which is an inherently a flaw of the gunnery mechanic. So while you can balance the flight model and get the ships to feel good, at the end of the day, when you're actually engaged, you're still going to have problems. And as far as RTV goes, I, I like glanced at it, but I was actually in Orlando this weekend, so I didn't have a chance to listen to it all. But what do they say on gunnery? Anybody? 
I'm curious. Um, did, Junto, did you, I, it sounds like you paid more attention to the gunnery part than um, th than I did. I was I was listening closely to to the rest of the flight model discussions. I'm they not being not a big gunner person. They didn't go into specifics. They just said that they are aware that it's an issue, and we're getting so we're gonna, double that, audio that, from probably XLB. I think. Oh, are you guys getting double audio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I apologize. Turn your shit down, son. <laughs> But, I would have uh, to go back and rewatch the RGV in order to pull specific quotes about gunnery because I, I didn't watch it for a couple of days now. Yeah. To, oh, me, like, to me, gunnery is tied to the flight model because, like, again, that's why you have different camps when it comes to how ships fly and what opinion, like, mm -hmm. what what camp you sit as how a ship should feel, right? Like, some people like the more sim-like type of environment, right? While some like more the arcadey um, descent level type of flight, like flight model, right? And those. Based off the way you play and how you aim and what devices you use uh, can help dictate your opinion of what flight model you think is right for Star Citizen. So well, here, here it comes in, you know, <clears throat> and this is a serious question for all of you uh, right now to set the premise. Right now, before the new flight model comes in, the main the side thrusters are operating at the level of main thrusters. They're way overpowered. In comparison to, let's call lore lore, you know, the mechanical lore. So that has to come down. And, but right now, it allows you to imagine CSGO. You, you can dark left, right. There's no penalty. There's no G force penalty for you overstepping the G mark by an insane amount. Um, there's no penalty whatsoever for for reversing and doing insane you know negative g's um uh you should black out or red out you know a hell of a lot sooner even with you know let's say that you you can manage with a really good spacer to in the future to get to 12 g's you know that's but that is very unlikely you know 9g is is really up there right now in in today's society so 7.5 if you take yeah so if you take blacking out yeah so if you take the well well with a spacesuit out where they can you know and they have the technique they, they can pressurize the suits yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. so but what do you think is the appropriate level to go down because right now it's arcade it's csgo in space and for some is is that the goal or is it more sim like you know closer to re not reality because reality is so boring it's not playable i don't, I don't think it's there has to be it has to be some it has it has to be it has to be i mean it has to be somewhere in between you can't have a ship that csgo I want to kind of get back to where what you were talking about. You were saying that there is no penalty for pulling high lateral Gs. No, no, there's 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 no the penalty threshold is re too high right now. I would agree. I would agree with that. Okay. Because you're probably pulling twenty to thirty Gs if you're fucking laterally strafing at SCM combat speeds. Have you mm -hmm. tried flying an M15 Currently. in the current version? Why do you say that? Because you can't. Yeah. It's just you black out so quickly. Yeah, but that that ship is also really super light and way faster than most of the other well, ships. Well, and that uh, that but you have to over... be able to you have to be able to also fly that ship though to its strengths as well. And if you if you go if you if you take the G's for instance and you make it completely sim like some ships the way they're built and what they're advertised to do or wouldn't be physically possible based yeah. off the laws of physics and G's that a person could take. So that's, again, yeah. when you going back to the point of, know. like, sim sim or arcade, that's where, like, you have to make compromises. Sure, it has to be but somewhere has in to, the middle. It has, yeah, exactly, somewhere in the middle. So you do you agree, and that's a question for everybody, including Joran, that it has to come down somewhat? Definitely. Um, do we all agree on that? Yeah. So or do I'm you think it's... Back up real quick on on some of that first of all i want to go back to uh Inivis, i think he said in chat um when you only have 10 to 15 minutes to like test the new flight model and everything at citizen con 
we couldn't get a real true assessment on stuff. So sure. that's, he's um, correct. Yep. you know, we, we didn't have enough time to kind of just fully dive into it. Like we normally would do put, you know, thousands of hours into it. And so, and of the course, question everything that, is subject that leads to, change. to though XLB is that you obviously, the question that that leads to though, is you obviously had time to speak with the people that are yes. engaging in these changes. Now, the, the, words that they use to describe to you what they were envisioning in their head give you confidence that it would be something that you were um, in tune with that, that's actually what i was about to uh, talk about here um so uh, we definitely i spent personally at least three to four hours within you know the test flight room just talking to several of the people mm -hmm. um uh andy uh colson bayor and some of the other guys that were just there um i would definitely say it talking with them I definitely got some of my the confidence back that it is going to be something fun and enjoyable for us all. They just have to get to that point, and at, for them to get to that point, you know, they're going to need. And as uh, Dupes was saying, you know, they have that new tool where they can adjust stuff on the fly and really get a good feeling for it. Which then also comes into my next point here, uh, talking about the whole blackout mechanic, or even um, you know what we can do uh, between you know, like you said, CS and and uh, like a sim. Um, well, what we don't want right now, because we have to remember that uh, this is in space and it's also 900 years in the future. We don't want something to where it's World War II planes in space and it's very similar oh, to atmospheric. We want it to be where it is a, a space like I don't six want to say a flight, six degree of flight. And if it is to, you know, drag uh, intensive, it's not going to be enjoyable for anybody. And we're not going to be able to go into gunnery that well if it's... Um, you know, if we're, we're just basically drifting all over the place. Time to kill will be way too long. Time to kill will be way too long. So I would definitely agree. It's It has to be somewhere in the middle of maybe have it to be a, a sim, but at the same time, that arcadey feel. Because uh, at, at the end of the day, the game has to be fun. And this is a huge conversation within the uh, CS4 community. You know, where is that balance? What are they going to do? And there's a lot of feedback from a lot of players, some of it salt, and, and <laughs> I'm guilty of that as well. But <laughs> it comes down to, you know, the people that really do spend thousands of hours in the game. Um, and I'm not trying to shit on anybody there saying that, you know, if they can give valuable feedback, we'll see, and it has to be constructive, yeah. we'll CIG actually like implement that. And that's mm -hmm. more of a concern. Um, than anything else. Okay. So, I think so they, they've, they've always listened to the community pr pretty well, at, as long as it's constructive criticism and feedback. I mean, the, they they want to blend fun and they want everybody's feedback. And I, and it certainly seemed like on the RTV that they were listening to what what people wanted out of this while trying to get back to what their original and and so far away from over. the couple of years as the uh, flight models just kind of spun out of control Pizza's yeah. here yeah the pizza is here um, um i guess the concern um and, and just going back into that i, I i'm not trying to like shit on cig or any of the devs or anything i mean there is a very huge concern that chris roberts vision of one thing it's it's a top-down decision that kind of hinders sometimes what the devs want to get done and and that can be concerning but Again, I think at the end of the day, we're going to get to where it is fun. I think. But let me ask this question. I got a question about that. Okay. The young man who was part of the flight model uh, presentation, I don't know his name. He's out of the UK, young blonde kid. Are you talking about Coulson. David Colson? David Colson. Cole. He took over for Pritchett when he left. Yep. He specifically said during that presentation that the implementation that they have right now is not final and they're absolutely exactly. relying on feedback from the community to get this thing right. Now, my first question about that is, do you buy that shit? Do you believe that they want your feedback or is that yes. just fucking lip service? No, I, I, um, I've had some conversations with Colson myself, not just at sitcom. Um, now, of course, there's certain times where I, you know, just because of his NDA and, and stuff he can't talk about or whatever, sure. um, he won't go into it because he doesn't want to get in trouble, you know, for whatever reason. And I think that's absolutely fair. Um, but I do believe that there is feedback going to him that I do see him actually like, okay, I'm acknowledging this. Um, one of the big feedbacks at Sitcon was that the pitch and yaw rotation rates might be a little too slow. 
and he even acknowledged that toward uh, at me at CitizenCon for saying, oh, okay, um, yeah, I might ramp that up a little bit. I don't want it to be too slow. Um, yeah, I, I think when, once they actually get it into place and, and they start balancing each, each of the ships, I think we're going to see a lot more differential between the performance ba based on in, in both thrusters versus fixed thrusters I and mean, how many thrusters they have and do they have more up down versus side to side um yeah. as as far yeah, as bring. far as re redirecting their 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 angular mo momentum to be able to re redirect their thrust and so, that hasn't been really a part of the flight model for a very mm -hmm. a very long time if if, if ever but I, well, i'm curious as to how that's going to change the baby <clears throat> I think there's a couple of like misconceptions about like what happened at CitizenCon. Like people are saying like, you know, the re like the new flight model. The flight model still acts the same as far as like how I calculate how like the thrusters putting sure, the out values are just different. Right. The values are just different. We're still using the same flight model. They've added stuff like lift and things like drag, right, to atmosphere. So the ships will change based off their silhouettes and their aerodynamics, right? Which is good because you want that. You don't want a car to all to be able to fly the same in atmosphere. As say a Gladius or or a ship or an M50 that looks more like a plane is more aerodynamic. Sure. But that being said, right, the main the main thing is that for the long time the combat yeah, community, the, the the combat community for a long time is that or not combat. I'll say people that were really into just the fighting aspects and dogfighting of the game uh, really felt like we didn't have any clue where they were actually going, and that was based off of patch to patch. How how flights and ships changed over time. So there were a couple big takeaways from Sitcon. I think is what one is that we were really looking for a, a clear, concise statement or pitch on what the where the actual flight model would go, right? And they basically right. said what that was, right? One is they want ships. They want ships to feel different and have different strengths and weaknesses, right? So uh, and I say Cartwall. I'll say Cartwall because it's a really easy example to use compared to like a Gladius. Cartwall is going to have a lot of lateral strafing. It's not going to be very aerodynamic. It may not. And it's light, so maybe it can be okay in atmosphere. But a Gladius is going to be able to perform much better in atmosphere and maybe have a better pitch roll ratio than say a, a strafe or yaw ratio, right? So the idea is those ships will have different strengths. Um, on top of that, too, depending depending on like what. Uh, Joran said where the thrusters are and the type of thrusters that also determines what kind of vector changes you will do, which will give more characteristics. So that was for me, the, the feeling of the ships each having their own personalities was one. And then two, the addition of the things like lift and the, and the drag were, were important. You're the saying second, these are good things. These, these are good things. Cause this was something that we were missing for a long time. We were missing solid direction from a statement standpoint of SIG. It was always like, we always had like random quotes to go off of like, oh, I want World War II in space or I want I want the dogfighting in Star Wars, you know, but that doesn't really explain if it's going to be more like Descent or if it's going to be more like DCS, right? And then- <clears throat> so think part, we've gotten past that? Well, see, now this is where- It's this the is, World War II in space bullshit? Because I don't think that was ever going to work, honestly. I think, I think the idea is that if you want to, from a combat standpoint or dogfighting standpoint, if you want to have DCS in space, Guess what? You go down and you fight in a dogfighting on a planet right. with gravity, right? If you don't, if you want descent in space, then you go up and you fly in space and you, and you dogfight. Now, obviously, that's like the opposite spectrum of, I mean, not opposite, but like two like very diverse spectrums. Yeah, they're different. But yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, the, it. <laughs> that's, that's like, that's, that's the general like idea of it, right? So that's why like what Moose was saying earlier about having that six degrees of freedom in space, why flight's got to feel different in space and you need to be able to have be able to pull off some of those crazy maneuvers and change directions or fly in ab abnormal vectors all the time but again if, if then if you ground that those changes in dogfighting in space to the sims of g-forces in atmosphere you're going to run into problems and oh, that's, no, that's not what that's we're not talking about g-forces and we're just talking about g-forces in general <clears throat> I know, but I'm saying yeah. is that I don't, you can't. I don't think you're gonna be able to do like a one to one on G's. You're gonna have to make sacrifices. No, no, no. no. Obviously, I, 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 about. I mean, we're not. To, we're talking about a middle ground. Sim. We everybody nope. has wants a pure sim. And I don't want a pure sim. No, nobody. There's people that do want it. I mean, it's well, it's, and there's people that want yeah, the opposite. Exactly. That they want the whole arcadey exactly. thing too. So we're gonna have to find a fucking middle ground, or we aren't gonna have to find shit. CIG is going to have to find the middle ground that works for the majority of the people. So let's go back to another point that was made, and it's directly based on the direction of the flight model versus the iteration on targeting and gunnery. 
do you think that part of the problem with uh the targeting is that the flight model has never been solidified and if that is the case once they find the proper direction will it lead to a more focused approach on how they're going to do targeting how they're going to do uh things like convergence and shit like that you would hope well oh kind of want to say yes and no yeah i mean we're a bit biased but i would i always i'm biased i know i'm biased i would say that 2.6.3 had it down it was solid in 2.6.3 six three was pretty nice Mm-hmm. Um, See, for me, uh, 1.3 was my favorite time. That's up. And 1.3 was 1. my 1.3 was my and favorite. 1.3 1. was good too. We have because they had the mantises. Yeah, well, that was one. so far. So far <laughs> and everyone loves time. the mantis. Yes. I, I didn't even start until 2.0. That that was my first. Uh, I know when I first backed and 2.0 dropped. Well, what was the first patch that they introduced the extreme, uh, whatever you want to call it, slide or whatever it was? 2.0. It was, it was a 2.0. 2. It was 2.0, and the ships really started to drift really hardcore, and it was yeah. really fucking hard to fly. 2.0, like because from 1.3 is when they went to 2.0, yeah. and that's when the flight model changed to something like a, a completely new direction. When it you know, it felt like because they were mm-hmm. in 2.0, they were trying to make the ships feel like they had weight. A lot of people, a lot of the problem was is back then in 1.3, you had there was a lot of darting around. It was more descent like, right? But a lot of people had fun with it, and depending on what kind of ship you flew, mm-hmm. you know there were strengths to it. Because I remember, like I can specifically remember back in those days like certain players flying certain ways depending on the ships that they were flying you know and then once we moved from 1.3 to 2.0 i just remember everything felt the same you know the ships generally felt the same everybody you didn't really see any any more of those movements but then the problem was that a lot of people would say oh that's fps in space that's why we're, we're we need to make this feel more like a flight you know a flight game instead but for me like i said 2.0 is when they lost me from a from a flight standpoint I that's when I started. When you say that the ships I, I liked it. felt uh, very similar in 2.6.3, or, or you know the 2.0 flight model. Um, Where I, all I felt the ships distance. felt similar. What was that? Like all the ships felt kind of the same. Yeah, I'm disagreeing that they felt the same. Oh, okay. Um, like for instance, uh, the Hornet had a, a, a greater pitch. Uh, pit. Yeah, it was it was better at pitching than say the Saber um saber had a greater or yeah the saber had a greater roll uh hornet had a had a greater um had a vertical strafing power um whereas so that would make saber had greater yaw potential big ass thrusters on yes um yeah you, you can see the big thrusters on the hornet that did contribute to the hornet having the uh greater vertical strafe potential and uh ships like the buccaneer um had uh great forward momentum they can accelerate into forward uh forward direction very fast um to the point where other ships as soon as the buck decided he didn't want to fight anymore he just had that option to uh, uh accelerate forward and no one could catch them okay Except now there's that's there's the perfect segue point. to the next next point <laughs> because i understand that from like the competitive community that the disengagement factor of those who do not wish to in stay in an engagement is an issue for better pilots it is now i say to you fuck you oh yeah oh yeah fuck you <laughs> yeah if i want to get away from you i need to be able to get away from you mm-hmm. you need to yep. chase Just need me the fuck ship. down so yeah. you can't run in your cockpit I don't, ah! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's true that's so, the problem no so, i like for for those that advocate that there should be no potential for escape or ships to escape at all. I mean, that, that's not what we're advocating for. There should be um, an avenue of escape that people can take advantage of. What we're saying is that the avenue of escape is too easy. It, it, it's it's too okay. easy for well, someone to accelerate let's, let's in break the that direction down. that they if, were going, their, their, their current trajectory, they just start accelerating in that direction, or they just do a blow by and they accelerate really past you and they continuously gain speed and distance between you by the time you turn around. And if you if you want to chase, and if you have the uh, ability to chase, do you have to deaccelerate, align to their alignment, and then start accelerating towards them that entire time? They're accelerating away. Oh, excuse me, accelerating away from you, that kinda and there is uh, ever increasing in. distance between you two that you're not going to be able to overcome. Yeah, but h- how would you combat that? There's no <laughs> way. Isn't you can... that so like real life? Let, 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 but is, let, but let, isn't that the strength? 
of, of the buccaneer to be able to get away because it's a lot more fragile than it, it, at some point when the armor values are more more in place so let's and let's it, get it, it down to, able to get away easier to two auroras let's say one is a, a freighter it has some cargo on board and one another one is just really specked out to kill you're in starter ships you you're coming out there and you've done a few missions and you upgraded your ships um and one is engaging the other to steal the cargo how easy should it be for him to get away because you don't have any let's say that you jumped him while he was stopping in space or doing a mission or or something because you alone can't interdict you will have to have an interdict ship with you mm -hmm. uh, how, no, how how you know, that, how 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 come now we come to the part well should you in one ship have the possibilities to say no you shouldn't be able to run away whenever you want or should there be a a second ship with you that is doing the the quantum interdiction and the local interdiction from running away by using emp missiles or emps so do you see where i'm going with this so when you, you say run away you're talking ship? about having the ability to quantum away not, well, quantum, not necessarily quantum, just escape via just, velocity. Okay. Yeah. And then at, at some point, quantum, you know, as you as you do that, when you feel that you you can safely do that, do you know, get away. So if you in one ship ha want to be able to do everything you're explaining, you're explaining a I win ship, which doesn't ex shouldn't exist. So there should be you this ship does one thing bit. and, yeah, and was, the other thing. Uh, thank you, Dupes. I was actually just about to call you out. That is a bit of a strong yeah, man. That's a bit of a strong man. I was advocating no, for at all. No, no. Yeah, I'm, I went ship. If you switched no, the conversation, no, we were talking about saying. dogfighters, and you went ahead and switched the, the uh, conversation to a fighter versus a freighter. Oh. The, it, the, well, that's a completely different beast. Well, that's, that's not, 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 no, well, not completely. That, that, I, that, I, I interpreted I, what, what, he, what he's saying is... I having the ship that is able to get away from the, the one who's attacking i'm not talking about people who are just engaged in arena in arena commander in strictly dogfighting i mean in the per versus the universe in spaceships yeah i mean that there's there there's a ship that's being attacked by another ship should they be able to get away if they have better th thrusters and they're, they're not as much of a, of a dogfighter um the the Buccaneer is able to get away from the Hornet. Is one Aurora who's got better thrusters, but doesn't have as, as good a away from, say, a, a different Aurora. If you're talking two ships on a fairly close parity level for starters, is what I, I, I interpret Realm is saying. Should the one be able to get away without having to engage? Um, let me walk I back. That, I'm a little confused on what we're talking about. Are we talking about sublight escape or FTL escape? Because like those are two different things, and I'm kind of want to focus on one thing before moving not on to the next. Quantum, so if we're just talking about away. sublight escape, at, yeah. just at, being at, able to accelerate after, away, afterburnering, afterburner, after. yeah, afterburner, um, up to max speed, up to max speed, you know, way above their new speed. cruise or whatever the yeah. hell they're gonna call yeah. it. Mm -hmm. And that's so, where the point where they can call for help. I'm being attacked. I'm being chased. Can you come help me? And they're just kiting until they get help. Do you see the point? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Someone in chat just pointed out that quantum is not FGL. Yeah, that's that's. I misspoke right there. I'm sorry about that. That's true. Um, it's like a percentage of the speed of light. I don't I'm know. Gonna, I don't know the numbers. I'm gonna so, sorry. I'm gonna interject here. Um, getting, getting to the whole like, um, I'm gonna use the example of two roars and one with having better thrusters. Yes, I think 100. percent There should be a way for somebody with better thrusters, obviously, to escape. The problem is, is you you got to make sure though that there is a balance that it's just not too easy because that's the issue too now. It's it's just too easy. You just go too fast, and then I'm, you know. I'm, confu I'm confused to how you would regulate it. That's a good question. Um, it, the amount of money you put into the ship, the amount of money you put into the module. Yeah, but no, no. If you, I need something more. How would you? Okay, so you're gonna stop ask me to, from okay, moving so away. How right. would I? You Here, here's an example. Here's an example to you. I got one for you. Right. Yeah. So say if you get within. Say you get within fighting distance, five thousand meters and less, right? Like, <clears throat> and you're within. If you can, if you can keep a missile lock on, for instance, uh, on that target, then that missile lock could could stop them, or or unless they could break the lock, right? Either through um, maneuvering you know, or whatever, maneuvering or equipment or whatever, right? I mean, this is off the top of my head. You're you're talking about you're asking for a solution off the top of my head for a complex problem and a complex balancing issue but I'll, I'll try 
but like that could be an instance or you could say like right like so what here's the scenario they're talking about here's a ship a hornet that's going to go fight and that's going to go attack this aurora right what could happen is before they even this hornet even fires a shot this aurora can instantly accelerate sure. to oh, 700 right. 700 and you don't even have a, even an engagement that's that's the point that we're talking about here no, we're yes not talking but about that's good the for the aurora pilot <clears throat> that's life that's tactics Okay, so from the guys who don't want to do that, sure. But from a game balance and fun standpoint, and wanting to play a video game, no, no. if I want to buy stars, I want to I want to buy star citizen. I want to buy star citizen, and I want a dogfight. And then you go in, and the mechanic doesn't support that type of engagement. That's a problem. Now, if you're going to ask me, to, <clears throat> what I'm saying is that you ha still have the ability to escape, right? But it's 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 an interdiction, is what it is, right? What happens when you're when you're when you're quantuming, right? You can you get interdicted. It pulls you out. Right, it's just you can have that same kind of setup in, in a smaller scale, and if you can break out of range, say, I don't know, say you can get you can get six thousand meters away, then that opens you up. I mean, like I said, this is a com complex balancing issue, but I'm trying to give you answers here. I'm trying, but, but... is it a balancing issue? Because I don't necessarily see it as a balancing issue. Not at all. It's From not supposed to be balanced. Yeah, I think it could be. Well, because mm -hmm. the Persistent Universe is not supposed to be Arena Commander. Yeah, now, I would agree with that. For the combat I agree with that as that well. want the engagements, the engagements will be there in the form of squad on squad or org on org battles or shit like that. And if you really want to be a dogfighter, you get in an org that's going to give you the opportunity to fight against people who want to fight against you. But the average jackass like Juntao and his fucking freelancer Max just trying to coat his fucking ore from one place to another. And then dupes and XLB and Moose all come out in their fucking uh, super hornets decked out. I need the option to get the fuck out, period. Fuck you guys. This, bye bye. This is, the, this is the where the that's the point. One of you three in this scenario would have to have EMP Some sort of interdiction would, would you, tool. You would have to have the interdiction for to take him out of quantum. You basically combat ineffective, but you're an interdiction uh support ship, basically. I'm I'm, oh, I'm okay oh. with that mechanic, but at the same time, I'm gonna use your scenario, Jen. Now, you know, you're you're in a prospector or mining ship or anything like that, and you know, all of a sudden we come out. You're 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 kind of missing this one huge step. This is a big universe, and you need to make sure you have intel going on. You got to make sure that there's no threats in the area, and that's the what the big org should do is have somebody that has scanners have intel saying, hey, there's a threat here. Scouts. That's when you get the fuck out and you don't stay there mining. And if you do, it's kind of on you. And at the same time, whether it be a big org or whatever, you know, there should be a gameplay of, hey, I'm going to go like, I don't know, cargo run. I'm going to hire Moose here or myself or whoever, you know, to to protect you. And that should be a part of it. But I, I fully agree that there should also be a support role ship, you know, keeping people from uh, quantuming away or even necessarily maybe even after burning away and, and that's something that's been discussed maybe, before maybe, the, maybe there's, well, why maybe there's should, electro, why would you... electro kind of weapon that can that can you know it interferes with your throttle management and allows yeah. you not to it allows you to cap your your speed at what you can yes. accelerate at, right and that's, that's something that yeah. i know agree about. there we agree but that's that's not the one ship that ship would be less combat effective because you would have to kit out your weapon stations with that and that's okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's your opinion. I could say once if that's just an add-on for your for your targeting lock system and what it in part of the no, lock. No, because is. we've already no. determined that the game's going to be a balancing act within itself right. within yeah. the ships. It's a give and take. So if you want to be the EMP guy, then you are going to be the fucking EMP guy. You're not going to be the six mantis is no, bearing I, down. Right. Uh, but I'm saying oh. is there's there's definitely even like that 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 theory of a weapon for locking your throttle right if if you if you had that for say a hornet you could only do it for ships that are smaller than you you couldn't do it to a to a freelancer Orion. or anything better because they have better electronical systems there's more they're just more advanced they're bigger they're Good. more power Absolutely. can't override it that that could be a balancing right but if you're in an aura and maybe maybe i have a a ghost hornet and i'm gonna sit on a meteor on the dark side of a meteor and wait to ambush you you know, and I have that equipped, then yeah, I should be able to have a mechanic in place or, or a gameplay mechanic in place that can, that inform that like part of the scenario is enforcing that engagement. Absolutely. The price you pay for that is not having four or five guns. You have two. Well, that's your right? opinion. 
Really of what what it would be. That, that, that's the, that, that that's the current version of it. I'm just using the current version. I got a novel epiphany for all of you. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> just maybe, it's auto balancing. And what I mean by that is exactly this discussion. Maybe two sabers head to head are balanced. A saber versus an aurora is not balanced. You agree with that? Yeah. Um, equal, I'm, all things being equal with pilot skill and all that other shit. The top speed of the saber is higher. The auroras is lower. Period. You will yeah. catch him eventually if you can't. If he can't quantum, you will catch him and you will fucking load his ass. Or if he doesn't fucking. keep changing so, courses and, and use proper tactics. So for for terminology's sake, and this is something that I even know Nubifier was talking about, and I've talked to him about it as well. Um, I don't want to use the word balance because that can be, I don't know, misconstrued, but let's, let's say fair, you know, I mean, but like you just said, a saber should be faster. It has better components. Aurora yes. doesn't. That is fair. You know, yes, there, it there is. doesn't need to be balance. Oh, the Aurora needs to compete with the saber. No, it That's shouldn't. What I'm saying. But what he gets, what he buys himself in that time is if he gets to get run away while you're going this way and he's going that way, he buys himself a minute, two minutes, five and minutes before you can catch up. And in that time, he can call for help. And that will help will be really, really close in some cases. And in some cases, they will not get there in time. You know, it's what, no, we can't make it. Sorry, you're on your own. But that that's the whole point. It's, it's not that we need to get away permanently, or we just need to get away far enough for you, for us to get into to quantum. That's the first part. So, and the other one is if we can't get away from you far enough to quantum safely, then you have the other part where we need to get so far or you from you that you can't really kill us. We're kiting you, even if you're gaining on us until we come to either we get help or you catch up and kill us. Well, there, there's a bigger picture beyond just the discussion of pure pure combat. And as Sarah and Innovus and Chad have said there, that and and junto he wants to haul cargo in his freelancer what we have now is a very very tiny play space where everybody is in the same exact area so it's difficult for people who just want to haul cargo to get away from the people that they just want to have combat so if somebody has to go to cryastro and that's being staked out by a bunch of combat guys because that's what they want to do and they just want to harass everybody <laughs> who's not interested then in you, combat then you, hire, then you hire some people we, to go we, fight we, we, yeah. well it, in in the in the future when we have a bigger universe I mean, right now we, we don't even have our first planet yet i mean we're, we're, we're just a few moons around crusader and we get another planet another planet we're am i freezing again yeah, yeah. yeah. go okay. ahead so um, we're still on the Stanton system, which is not a safe system. And exactly. we're supposed to have however many systems whenever we go live, which is in, in, in question now, after the, the 12 pillars have been kind of laid out, and how many systems are we going to have? And are we going to be able to spread out more so that people who just want to have safe or maybe PVE, some NPC pirates attack, okay, well, you can blast them fairly easily um, or get away from them. And then those less safe systems where I mean, there's just org on org and there's giant space battles and you got Idrises and Javelins and Krakens and there's huge fleets and people who spread out a little bit more so i mean yeah. I, ideally that's the space that most of us want to be able to have that freedom to choose and if junto wants to haul cargo into a more high security area then he can hire some escorts like saren who's in chat there he, he's the combat consultant for the 890 jump club and he um he's one of the combat pilots for lucky 13 and so i mean he's one of the one of the orgs that will go to okay we'll transit from one safe system through an unsafe system to get to a safe system. So we're going to hire a bunch. Or we're going to hire a Kraken and an Idris and a bunch of fighter pilots to take us safely from point A to point B. So, uh, remember, you can still die in a safe system. It's it's not. You're, uh, you're I don't die less, system. Less you're, less likely to be attacked. 
you're far less likely to be attacked. I, I, I've actually done a fa fairly extensive research from the star map and, and lore. Out of the 100 star systems that we're supposed to have, there's about 8 to 10 that are pretty safe as far as their their long-term heavily developed UEE systems with a heavy UEE, UEE presence. Mm -hmm. So I, ideally we should have, when we go live, following Chris's 12 pillars, and we no longer have any more wipes, that we should have at least one full star system where people are pretty well safe because, and there's enough of a UE Navy um, presence that it's going to discourage um, griefers and pirates and that sort of thing coming in there. And then there's, and we'll have enough area for people to be able to choose their level of danger. I, we're, we're not going to have that PV, PV, Later, um, that some people want to just okay well I want to be able to go anywhere and nobody ever attack me well that's not going to happen but you have to be able to choose your level of risk in the universe so hopefully we'll, we'll have that when we go live in whatever time frame that is I'm, I'm actually glad you brought that up of, of risk um, I think that's that's what matters is there is going to be a risk reward you know in these unsafe like systems that we're supposed to have um, they're not UEE occupied or, or even like Vanduul or whatever. Um, ideally, that's where, the money's gonna be. that's where the money should be. That's where, you know, the best resources should be. But you have to understand, you're not just going to be able to reap that reward without, <laughs> With, yeah. say, pirates or other players. But at the same time, that only drives content. Even you losing your ship drives content. Hiring, you know, like the example earlier, hiring uh, people to protect you, a Kraken, whatever that drives player content and it brings a unity to the universe as far as player content. And that is truly important. So even if you die, we, we, you know, we, we agree on that. We, we all agree on that. Yeah. Okay, and here, that's, let's that's, hit this that's, that's, that's a okay. driven real quick. Siren says, uh, as the subject of griefing has been brought up, PVP in the PU is not freaking griefing. I would agree. I'll just concede right now that PVP in the fucking star citizen universe is not griefing i okay i've, I've got to say 100 percent agree um what was griefing and i'm going to use an example and i'm sorry for bringing it up i won't mention names uh there was a certain streamer um who was being and this is early <laughs> this is early 2.0 um he couldn't even get off the landing pad because people were literally just ramming right into ramming. the landing pad. That's now griefing. that I will 100% say that's just griefing like but if you he, target the same players targeting the same player over and over Targeting Just the same player purposely stream sniping for the purpose of getting a kick out of it. No, 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 not only it, you can stream snipe or but if you come back and stream sniping again and again and again. Yeah, and well, he was he was moving snipe all you want. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was right, moving. Okay. Him. <laughs> he, uh, he, um, he was moving servers and people were following him just to do that. That, I would I'm, say, is 100% griefing. I'm just saying right now, if you're streaming your valuable cargo somewhere and you're on my hit list from before... Hey, that's fine. I'm we'll using it for it's, it's free everything intel. it's worth. Yeah. It is free intel. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and but, I, I hate to say that, but it is, you know. But, like, um, when you pull up to freaking uh, Korea... And you get out of your ship in an unsafe zone with no comm array active and you think you're going to go in there and you're going to have a good time and stuff and someone comes up and blows the fuck out of your ship, that's not griefing. Then they land on the pad and come inside and kill you dead, that's not griefing. That's fucking gameplay. And it sucks because I've been on the end, the receiving end of that bullshit. It's not I think we all have. But... It's the way it's going to be. It's the way it that's should the, be. That's the price you pay for being alone. And, and that's true. Exactly. You need to make sure you have org mates or, or teammates to kind of help back you up. I mean, we do that all the time. Um, it'd be like, hey, I need to go into Korea real quick for X, Y, Z. Uh, can you just fly? Um, what, what, what do we call it? Um, just like stay out. In space air and just, yeah, basically like a patrol. Mm -hmm. We do it all the time. You know, we got many squad mates. And, and if you can't do that, you know, eventually, hopefully we can pay people to do that. And with contracts or whatever, again, player content. I go on my guys, um, the people that I immediately play with all the time. If they're not on comms, I get very upset with them. Um, we have a friend named Nas who he went to the PU without getting on comms, and I got really pissed off. And I was like, okay, we need to go kill him. Yeah. We need to go find him and blow him up. Well, well we know him personally. But so. Yeah, he, he lives like right next door to this guy. So um, that that was that was uh, something that I always um, 
get on my team all, all the time. Uh, if you're getting into PU, you have to get on the comms. Yeah. So if something but goes down, we can we can come help you. Mm -hmm. I'm just so going to go back to the balancing thing real quick. Yeah, and yeah. Say, I don't I don't necessarily know that there's any need to balance anything. I think it will be balanced just in the way that it is as realistic as it possibly can be. If I can outdrive you and you can't catch me, you can't kill me. In the real world, if you can catch me, well, you can you can kill, kill me. me. If you want me? I just, I just, again, what what started this top, the what we were talking about earlier was about that the whole idea of being able to break engagement. And I agree that players who don't want to fight should be able to break engagement, but it can't just simply be hold down a button and break. Oh, engagement. I agree. That's no, no, that's I, that's the I, point. I dis, that, I, dis, uh, I disagree. You <clears throat> will have to be strategic in the Make way you approach your target. Them, so yeah. so you See, can I, disable the target or at least hit the engine on the first go, so they don't. If you don't do that and they pass you, you already lost if they have a faster ship. That's how easy it should be. That's how For easy it should part, be to yeah. break the aggression. For the most Let, part, yeah. Let's take this in a little bit of a different direction. Time to kill versus time to disable. As combat pilots, are you going to be apt mentally to actually disable people <laughs> and, and leave them? Or are you going to kill them? Most well, you okay, you so do, fighters, <laughs> fighters, we're gonna go for the cockpit shot anytime. Like if, if, we're, if we have the opportunity to go for the cockpit shot, we're gonna go for for fighters. When it comes to the if, larger if, crafts, if, such if, as if, if they, the if caterpillar, the constellation, the, uh, the reclaimer, yeah, I mean, um, I'm if sure we'd be out. better motivated to go after the engines. Think so about, if they opt that think, out in balance think, purposes, think about this though, right? Like I hate to bring up gunnery again, but think about this, right? If you wanted to say shoot off a thruster on a caterpillar, you would have it's to use you would have to use lag pips if you want assist in order yeah. to aim. That's all right, right? Yeah, we switch between <clears throat> lag and lead all the time. Right, right. So, <clears throat> it, it, but again, if you don't, if you don't, if you only, if you only fly the one certain way of gunnery, and you're only going to be using lead, which uh, which could happen. Again, that's, <laughs> that's part. That's I, I propose that's, adapt. Yeah, that, that's yeah. that's what I would remark to that. Just adapt, uh, find find a hotkey to switch between lag and lead. Sure. You have your lead against your, your use lead against the smaller, more maneuverable <laughs> fighters like the M50 or the Gladius, just, and then yeah. you switch to lag against larger crafts. That way, you can pick and choose your targets. If you don't want to adapt, I don't know what to say to you. But yeah. the real question, like. <laughs> So I, I no, I, I know. So that's the thing too is I would I would switch between lag and lead when I would when I would play, depending on the type of target that I was going for. So yeah, I was. I mean, I'm familiar with with switching between the two. <clears throat> so. Theron says disabling will be much more profitable, right? Okay, but that's assuming you're a certain type of player, right? Yeah. And if you're a good guy. Right, a theoretical good guy. If you're on an org that doesn't want to get in trouble, then <laughs> there's no profit in disabling but, shit, right? Well, what, well, well I, I think what he's talking about is disabling it, take the cargo or take the take the ship. That is what he's saying. But value you, as, as opposed matter. to you can kill to, the pilot regardless. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's he's not talking about. And once you take once you disable that, then your guys come going aboard and they make whatever decision they do. But as opposed to just blowing a ship up, which right now we don't really have that much of an option to do one or the other because right. it hasn't been yeah. implemented. But once once we get that item 2.0 and you're able to disable a ship and go for its component systems, its engines, its power plant, or, or what have you, it, it it's far more. Uh, incentivized to disable a ship than blow the whole ship up. Although the person still might get killed, that just depends on how unlucky you are. So, I mean, balance-wise, when we talk about this, uh, you, you do have the cap capacity to say, well, I want really, really, really going to push my engine because I'm going to do the sliders all the way up, so I will burn my engine. I will really, really wear them out quickly but i'm doing it so i save my ship you see what i'm going with this right they've in the mechanics oh, they've talked oh. about and introduced and that's part of yeah so it is a part of well i'm taking a hit on my wallet in my freighter ship to get away from a fighter now it's up to the fighter whether they, they want to take a hit on their wallet trying and try to catch up 
while they're overclocking. You know what I mean? So it's a it's gonna be a price thing there. And same thing with the missiles. You, you can try and get EMP missiles. You know, once you're catching up far enough, you can try and get EMP missiles on them to stop them. But there will have there's not gonna be I can fire an EMP missile, so I win. There will be a chance to you know chaff and flare it. So it's gonna be a cost versus re reward, you know, balance in there. And I'm not talking about now where you can just take away your account and restart it, wipe it, and you get five million credits again. I'm talking about in the persistent PU. You know, when they once it go live and nothing is wiped, everything's gonna have a cost and it's gonna be once you're over your first kick and you, you're about making money so you can do and go and do what you want, there will be there's a everything you do will have a cost. And that's also part of the balancing. I'm gonna clocking. I mean, I would agree on on some of that. Um, I think it would just I would have to wait until it's in the game to actually go forward on that. But I wanna I wanna kind of walk back to the whole. You know, is it more profitable to uh you know disable a ship and get it, or to just blow it up? Um, depends on the ship. It depends on the ship. I would have to say, but it also depends on the scenario. I mean. I'm going to use Imperium here. You know, what if Imperium's at war with another orb? Um, if it's if blowing up that ship is overall more profitable to the war effort, I'm going to blow it up. Mm -hmm. If it's more profitable to disable it, I'm going to disable it. I mean, it it just it, it comes down to what is the purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and I'm not gonna lie, I like uh, my explosions, yeah, and I'm probably. really excited to see salvaging. Yeah, yeah, salvaging is an issue 2. too. So. It's gonna be good. <laughs> Gonna love it. We'll actually be able then, to use a reclaimer. Yeah. And then now that then we go on to the other things that has to do with balance, multi crew ships and turreting, multi crew ships and and multiple missile targeting on multiple ships at the same time, etc. We're going into um, balancing a ship versus another class ship is not possible. In 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 the overall because you cannot balance against one ship and then another ship and then another class and multiple classes over and under it's not possible you will just have to say if you're engaging in a in a single seated fighter you need multiple single seated fighter against an effective multi ship crew isn't that uh, a point um, that dupson was making in team speak the other day I think it was, I don't remember, was it Dupes or was it somebody else saying one of the big mistakes that CIG made was trying to balance ships in Arena Commander. Or no, you know what that was? That was Nubifier saying that on uh, Answer the Call on Torch17's Twitch channel. They made a huge mistake by saying an Aurora should be able to last in Arena Commander because they didn't have any sort of bracketing system to say light fighter, medium fighter, heavy fighter, all need to go against themselves. And I don't think that they had the population to really um, accommodate that kind of thing. You'd have like a couple of Aurora pilots and one, and then, you know, a bunch of safe pilots. A, a lot still has a tremendous amount to do with, with pilot skill. I, when, one, of the, one of the first videos before I backed the Aurora into the- guy. Yeah, the, the, the Aurora guy, the, the yeah, Viking yeah. guy, I'm blanking on him. <laughs> Video where he had like an ace spree and Aurora killed like a, a, no. uh, a, no. a, a dozen <laughs> hornets and, and other <laughs> and other stuff. Um, like you know, I, I, you can say okay, well, two pilots of equal skill and two ships of equal skill, but and as you as you got, know, you're not of equal skill to other people. If you were in Aurora versus a not very good pilot in a super hornet, hornet, you would take them most likely. Mm -hmm. I, I know I've, I've done it before. Yeah. I've been so, in an Aurora so, and completely win against Hornets and, and yeah. Sabres. And, it is possible. No. And, so I, I I don't think CIG has an intent an intent to balance ships against each other. They just want to make sure that ships are as balanced for their intended purpose um, as possible. And then we make our own choices in, in the verse. Like, what, well, what, what ship are you going to fly? Time they were trying to do that, though, Joran and Arena Commander, when Arena Commander was the only thing. Because they were trying that, to change weapons that, and shit. That to... was that was a microcosm of oh, the sure. verse. Now that we're actually getting more of a verse, I I, I think 
people coming out of Arena Commander to dogfight in, in the PU because that's more of a realistic environment. Now, I mean, Saren talks about that all, all the time. That he, he prefers to spend his in the PU in a more realistic environment than um, than, than the um, microcosm of, uh, of Arena Commander. And I, I think we'll see that changing more o over time at, as we have more, more people in um, and more play space and more scenario possibilities. I'm going to call it here because I really need a piss music break as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, Relum called for that like uh, <laughs> fucking well over now ten he minutes ago. Go. He just he just got up and fucking <laughs> laughed and got. <laughs> Since these fuckers are eating pizza and shit, it's really good too. Hey, there's Fastcart. <laughs> hey, Fastcart. Fast okay, well, now. Mm hmm. Okay. Good. Well, we have the question bot running. I actually never mentioned that, but um, that thing's still up. Submitting questions with the um, usual format. I'll just post it in chat. That's how you do that. And um, that uh, with that, leave that hanging, and we'll go through music break. Um, let me actually find music. Lull. We had some great um, remix. That Knight Rider linked in our in our Discord, I think, somewhere. What the hell is that? There, we can play that. That's pretty good. This is Jared Disco Lando Huckabee, and you're listening to the Bass. But uh, I mean, it's just I and mean, how the uh, how the ships maneuver. Oh, we're back. On. We're back. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. Oh. <laughs> it's just step, step, step right in, into the conversation. Yeah. Um, I, I, I don't think it's going, it's going to affect the, the, the really professional combat pilots significantly lear, learning how ships move a little bit differently. It's, it's really, if you're a good combat pilot, you're a good combat pilot. I and agree. It's really I, just, I, I, I think, I think, I think it's, it's more, I think it's more, it's going to be a choice of, I choose to not run away. I choose to engage you. And I die because to engage you. <laughs> is it Pizza Hut? Mm -mm. It looks like Pizza Hut. What is that? It's Papa John's pan, their new oh. pan dish. Oh, wow. We don't eat Papa John's here. So mm. let's go to I, a topic that is in, no in, in, in line with this. Um, time to kill. And in this scenario, let's assume that you are a better combat pilot, which you are, right? Uh, or both of you, since he's back. Um, you're fighting against me, which is a crap combat pilot. But I'm good enough so that you have to evade me. But as you evade me, you are always on target. Okay. Now, let's look away from the, you know, the cockpit shot. Yeah, I, I can say that. Let's just assume that every cockpit is see-through aluminum. Every cockpit, you have to be spot on. And then it even then they take m multiple... Shots. Otherwise, it's just going to bounce up like it would with see if we're a minute or whatever you call it. So, what should a proper time to kill or disable or whatever you want to go be in that scenario? I mean, talking about consistent shots. Consistent you shots. Shots on target depends on the weapon. On target. But um, depends on the ship, yeah. its shields, its components, yeah. its yeah, armor. Let's, let's, There's so a let's lot of variables. Let's, let's go ahead. How long of a dogfight is too long against dog another fight. Hornet? Both Hornets yeah. have um, uh, three Omniskias and one size four Omniskias. That's that those incredibly powerful cannons. I, I, can't, I, I can't hit you, so it doesn't matter. But we have the same shields, you know, all that mm -hmm. stuff. You know? So so purely time on target um, and, or time to kill. Less than a minute. Uh, I would say less than a minute. And, and and this is where I know some people aren't going to like this answer. If you're going to get into this, if you're going to get in a single seater ship, such as a Hornet, Sabre, whatever, you need to understand that there is a high risk there. That you should, oh, absolutely. Be, you should be killed very quickly, whether it be through a, uh, a skilled uh, fighter pilot or even against, let's say, the Hammerhead. You should be killed quickly. There mm -hmm. shouldn't be a high time to kill. Um, and, and But... The single sh uh, seater ships should be very effective. So there's the very high risk there, but very high reward. Um, but if you if you're not up for that, you know, 
I've That's done true. a hammerhead with a, what is it 24 omniskis and you just blow everybody <laughs> the fuck out of the water and it had we, 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 we agree if you if you get hit by a bengal carrier you're dead regardless what you're in right you know so yeah, I know, you guys, did you guys see the, uh, the 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 Revenant um, uh, hammerhead uh, video that STL Youngblood put up today? Like it, no. it, they put in this all, case, all, superior. absolutely all, all Revenants on the on, on the whole thing. It was pretty. That's pretty it cool. Was, it, it sounds pretty... cool. Um, the the Revenant, un unfortunately, the GPS just isn't there. Well, uh, that's the whole yeah. yeah, no, it's 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 not not certainly not for high 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 DPS, but for just cool. Massive. Oh, it looks cool. Okay, we're just going it for cool fun. factor. Okay, oh, it's just, no, just just going for fun. Just going for pure fun. <laughs> well, keep in mind, all so, these values so you, are going to so, change. So you're well. saying okay. you're saying less than a minute. Let's yeah. say, are you calling just under a minute? Or you're saying between those seconds fighters, between two two hornets? Yeah. Yes, less than a minute. And let's say it's so just under or just under. Yeah. Well, and I'm, saying, I'm talking like, about. Under. Um, Depending on where you, there is some inconsistent firing, where there there are some in, in, inconsistent shots. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm good enough to sometimes. making you having to avoid me my shots. Yeah, so but you, you know will... what I remember was XLB. You did this YouTube video where you like put these guns on a ship and you put a dummy ship out there in free flight and you shot it. Bang. Yes. Bang. 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 Okay, it took. 10 shots with this weapon 15 shots 20 shots blah 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 yeah uh, you're you are you that good of a pilot right this is the first caveat are you that good of a pilot that you land every fucking shot depends on the opponent especially if they're flying in a if they're flying like they would be in atmosphere yes very easy target to hit and we can land every shot on the cockpit if if they're if uh, they're flying a certain way, and a lot of people fly a certain way, uh, they, they fly like they're flying an Atmo. They have a con they they, they they're gonna gonna they, yeah they, exactly Ex yeah they're not doing a th circle strafe. They're just no no no. no. So so okay, this is also a huge misconception. I'm going into this real quick. A lot sure. of people say circle strafing is boring. Okay, I kind of agree when you're just all you're doing is circle strafing. Do close orbit fighting. It's not just a circle straight. Mm -hmm. It's we're using all six degrees of flight. Mm -hmm. You know, straight up, straight down, on top of the ship, and. and but do you, yeah, and those that, do you understand that? Do you understand that? Me and Junta, we do not want that in the game. Do you understand that? I mean, no, we, what, what? we understand that you want that in the game. The circle, circle straight. strafing. Well, I want close orbit fighting and knife fighting. There's, yeah, I yeah, find yeah, that yeah. different. Though. Yeah, there's a difference between yeah. uh, like the close orbit fighting and just the circle strafe because there's a little bit more yeah. going on when so, we engage someone. And yeah, yeah, yeah. For, from a lot of people just realize just circle strafe or not just circle strafing. There's a there's a strafe down and a pitch or a strafe up and, and a pitch so we can get those and roll shots. including or sometimes a roll so we so we, we can get you know the and, cross section of the saber and start hitting it, its cross section. Yeah, and I, I, I appreciate. It. Do you? Do, do, do I'm, I'm not saying that it shouldn't be there. I'm just saying we are not interested in that gameplay at all. Okay. Why? And you are. So there needs to be a balance. <laughs> Realm, are you, are you saying that you're just not interested in PvP combat? Over combat. There. <laughs> I'm Tio. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't say anything. Are, are, yeah, I mean, are, are, the point. The I point is you need to have the ability to base off the ship. Like, not all ships can do knife fighting too that's the that's yeah. the other that's the other factor but, like <clears throat> but yeah that like if you're in a small dogfighter type of ship and then that's its strengths then yeah you should be able to do that and then there should also be you know counters to to that type of fighting as well but are you saying you're <laughs> just not interested in, in i, I, I want to get back to the why why are you not interested in that type of combat because we suck we suck at it and we don't want to spend time doing learning it the way you do mm -hmm. well Plus, we'll plus, plus the age, plus, plus, plus the age thing. I'm as old as the fucker over there. I'm but, just okay. better looking. So let's go this route because XLV and I were talking while everybody else was doing their thing about uh, the 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 main issue that he has with this whole disengagement tactic is Jun Tao thinks he's a, a big fucking dog, right? And he's got his super hornet all decked out, or so he thinks. And he sees XLB, and he goes, you know what? I'm going to fucking gank this guy. And then all of a sudden, I realize, wow, this guy isn't a chump. I fucking tagged him a bunch of times and fucking swatted the hornet's nest. And then I said, shit, got to go by. Should I be able to go 
Bye bye. Fuck this. I'm out of here. Well, depending on. After you take this yes. amount of damage, no. You know what I'm saying? So how? I don't know how CIG is going to prevent that sort of scenario because how do you balance? Like we were saying, you jump the freelancer guy. The freelancer guy's like, "Fuck this shit. I'm out of here." Or the hornet guy jumps you and you turn around and start punching him in the dick and he's like fuck this i'm out of here how do you keep him you know that's going to be a that's, trip is that you so will bad, have really to be though? in front of him do, do, do you un, don't so you will have to be in a such a such a position that if he decides to gun it using afterburner you should if he decides to use the tactic okay he's not going to be able to turn for a little while i should go now and as I don't have that bad of a engine because you weren't targeting my engine, would you? You were just shooting generally to hit my ship. You know, now, would and that you say, be Time a tactic? To... That's a good point. Would that be a tactic of the better combat pilot to bang on the fucking main engine a little bit to try to disable its capabilities to keep it from running from you instead of going for the cockpit shot right off the bat? In an mm -hmm. open world scenario, obviously not in Arena Commander because you know you're engaging in Arena Commander. Mm -hmm. It's consensual PvP. In Arena right. Commander. But in the open world, wouldn't that make more sense if you could knock a bunch of po hit points or however they're going to gauge it on the main thruster and say, now this guy can't afterburn to what? max speed what? anymore because his engine well, he, fucking he, he can afterburn, but the... The, the way they explain it, you can still have to burn, but it will be really ineffective. If That's what I'm saying. So he'll be slower. Yeah. And then so you can you'll catch be him. able to... If, if you're pointing the right way, because you will have to have the correct tactics. If you're pointing the wrong way, that's on you, not on him. And War will Even point you... out, and this is exactly what I'm saying. If you've taken a certain amount of damage, hitting a throttle will result in backfires. We saw that in a recent video. So if that's the case, if you take enough damage, if you guys are such great well, fucking like, again it, well that's, that's where, oh that's okay where, yeah that's oh okay where <laughs> TTK, that's, that, that, that's where ttk comes into play though too if it takes you if it takes you three minutes to knock down the shield to even be able to hit the thruster then how well, are you it'll take to you about to, 10 minutes to kill don't the use that energy right, don't right, use right. energy weapons then use right, but, ballistic weapons if they if that's how they decide with the penetration because with ballistics well, that's, that's what still, she said yeah. I mean, I, I agree, you know, you should be able to do damage like that so you can keep people from kind of escaping. But uh, in, in Gentile, this is what we were talking before, about before we got back. Um, th one of the main issues I see right now, it's not that I don't want to see people running. No, running should be a, an option. Um, the issue, though, is I see people consensual or um, they, they want to make the, the, the or no, they do make the decision to go in and attack. And then they're like. Oh God, I'm outmatched. And they can get out pretty much scot-free right now. There is no way of stopping them, whether it be through mm -hmm. engine damage or distortion damage or whatever it might be. And that is a big but issue because you just see people willy-nilly engaging and then they're like, oh shit, I'm not going to win this. Mm -hmm. And if you can't kill them quickly with the time to kill being, you know, either too high, too low, whatever, usually too high. Um, and when, when people are engaged and when they realize that they are losing, the mistake has already been made. They, they, the reason that they can see that they are losing is because they see that they've taken damage. The, you know what I see? It comes to where that, they've that, taken damage, but where? as soon as they yes. start taking damage to a certain section of the ship, there should be some sort of penalty um, uh, for that, you know, the avenue or the potential of escape. Well, that penalty is already evident that they cannot they cannot go away even if they use the correct tactic you're in the wrong place they're in the right place their <coughs> sorry their avenue of escape is reduced you know but they can still try to and you can still and follow them right because you have, you would have to turn around follow them and since they're they're damaged they couldn't go as fast you will be able to catch them. they still have that window open to them where you will have to burn out your engine they're burning out their engine you're having a cost you will have to use missile to to close that gap when you get close enough otherwise you risk having some of their friends coming in and helping them so you will always have to have your decision also you know you have a cost of following while we have a cost of running away if that makes mm -hmm. sense and if you're good enough you should you should be as Gento said be targeting are a means to escape, not trying to get a headshot on something that shouldn't be that easy in the first place. Doopsums. The so I, I kind of want to answer uh, <laughs> Warwolf's um, uh, comment there. 
Um, no, I think guerrilla tactics and retreat and, and, and engaging is a thing, but it need, does need to be, let's say, ship specific. If you're in an M50 and you're really fast, you know, and I'm in a Hornet and I'm slow, you should be able to do that. If you're in a Gladius, which is a light fighter, you should be able to do that. Um, my issue is, is somebody made an acti active decision to engage and they can just get out scot-free. Mm -hmm. That's well, after they've think... already taken damage, or after well, they've made the mistake and there's right damage now, to the ship. Right now, the penalty it's to that mistake either is you know, the, the penalty to that mistake is uh, it... <sighs> he has to repair this? a ship. You damage you damage his ship. He has to repair it. He's burning out his energy, and we'll have to repair that or changing out faster. You know because or repair it fast you know fast because it's burning out so there's there's no scot free there's still the penalty of you beating him up it's just that he did lose his ship there's a difference mm -hmm. he okay, had to that, use his missile point. let so, me make this point real quick there's no zero and a hundred there's everything in between and then and then we gotta we gotta do this uh first you know what i honestly think you want to know my honest opinion well this is your You're show sad. You didn't get your fucking dopamine. <laughs> That's what I think. You didn't get your fucking kill. You didn't get your fucking like on Twitter. You didn't get your fucking smileys on Facebook. So you got a dopamine uh, reduction and it makes you sad. You're, ridic you're ridiculous. No. <laughs> Fuck you. So what was what were you going to say, fucker? Because you were going to say something in there. Do you even yeah, remember? Yeah, it, it comes to... I, I, so how I see this whole conversation, it depends on where you, where you stand on this one issue is this do you do you punish for getting in the situation in the first place or do you only punish once you're in right and that's the difference right because you can say if when you're talking pu you say well if you get into if you get into that situation where you're in an active engagement well should you be punished because you're in that engagement because you didn't hire anybody with you or you're mining in an unsafe place or you know you're, you're doing an unsafe trade route right so then if you if you're of that mindset then once you're in the engagement then the mechanic is you're locked into that engagement because that's part of the risk of possibly being in it or the the other one is it's pu it, the, it's regardless of what the situation is or the risk or what space you're in or what you're doing you should have the ability to to just uh just to just be able to get out and the onus is completely on the the aggressor from the start so <clears throat> that's kind of what that, that's kind of what i'm hearing that's kind of what i'm hearing from from both sides so far me personally no, you, 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 I, I think i think i think getting into the gate I, I think i think the aggressor putting himself into the situation should be as a form of a, of a punishment like of getting 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 the hit on onto the target right now, so, do you think that i think i think having... the mechanic a mechanic of breaking that engagement should be just as hard as the aggressor being able to get into that engagement from the first place. Well, he he has to evade, evade you in the first place with less skill. That's punishment enough in the first place. Uh, and, and, and we're coming back to the same place where there's no way to limit the mechanic that I can see physically without there being a button, I win button for you guys. You know, like Dupson tried to explain, if I can target you with maybe a missile, you can go to to cruise speed. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because I do have maybe something here. You know how when you engage, the the game engine understands that you're in a dangerous mm -hmm. scenario. It understands when you're engaged. The game engine yeah, physically it, knows it play, what you're doing. It plays the music. It for plays you. music that tells you you're gonna die, right? Okay, so the engine knows that. So what if there was an acceleration curve slowly ramping you up to max speed instead of, because I know what you're saying right now, if I fucking mash afterburner, my acceleration is like that. I'm just starting to accelerate at a, at a consistent speed. There's no ramp up in that speed. Or, or what, what about if you're shooting a ship and because you're hitting its shields, the power in order to keep those shields up exactly. is stopping it's you from, being, from able, the being, able, being able to, to accelerate afterburn. to get that's up to that speed, right? That's that's another way you could you can kind of keep the engagement, right? So part of it is you have to be able maybe to maneuver or, or block to be able to give your, your ship a chance to start the charge, to the then you can have shows. enough... To, to then be able to, to then be able to right or maybe and that would be or or, or, that, or that's, maybe, that's, right, that's already right. in the balance do you choose to right 
you know, uh, do you choose to put all the, you know, um, a lot of the trust or power into your shield, or do you choose to put a or, lot or, of power? Right. Right. Or, for instance, if, if you want to, if you want to break engagement initially from the start, and you don't even want to fight and you want to run, then you got to put all the power into your into your um, acceleration and yeah. your thrusters. That's but then that, but, but but then it leaves you open. But then it leaves you open for those hits and that shorter TTK to get a yeah, but, to be disabled so, or or like it's got to be a trade off. Like you know, that, that that's, that's the will have to that. do the, the pursuer will have to do the same thing. We're arguing we're about arguing balance. Dirt. Well, well, we're debating because it's fun and because it's yeah, we're just talking. There's feedback throughout the entire process of this game. So I, that's part of it. I gotta say, dupes. I actually agree 100 percent there. Yeah. Um. And and what I was trying to get at too, that's for that aggressor. Whoever it be, whether it be me or somebody else, aggress you know, I'm the uh, person on the other receiving end. Um, it should be a a thought process. Is this engagement a good idea? Instead of oh crap, this engagement is turning bad. I can just get away now. It, you know, you got to think prior to the fight. Is this engagement good? Right. And, and, and this this what debate. About the people that didn't but but this about the people that didn't that didn't engage. Yeah, but I, I, a lot of this is centering around people. Okay, somebody engages you, and then okay, well, they they fucked up. They shouldn't have engaged you because they're very good pilots, and they realize like, holy shit, you're gonna kick their ass. What about the people that are just wandering around on on, on their own business, get attacked? I, they happen to fly near somebody who's looking for a fight, and they just want to get away. Well, I, I would think that goes back to the uh, in, having intel. You know yeah. what, what kind most, of system are you flying? Most people in the PU will not have that at all. If you're a if you're not have what? Pilot. I'm sorry, I wasn't able to catch some of that. Uh, will not will not have what? Most people in the PU will not have any intel of any sorts at all. You can just how do you know? Because ninety percent of the people, people are in one man organization. <laughs> that's on that's, them. That's their mistake. That's on them. Okay. But, yeah, I but I think that, that's, this goes dead. back to what <laughs> we were <laughs> saying before. That, this, you have to drop that mentality because that's the people that Chris is making the game for. Not you, not me, not Juntao, not dupes, them. Yeah, the 99.7% that aren't right, even but, involved in the community believe, right now are the all, ones that the game's But, but Tia, it's such a bullshit argument because we all backed this game, so we're all like... We all have nope. right now at this point. It's still nope. the game is going to be whatever it's going to be, and we don't really know what it's going to be at the end. We have an idea, hopefully, when it gets when it gets finished. But till it's finished, that's the whole point of even debating in the first place. If you're going to make that argument. Do I even have fun this show? for fun for the most poor people? That's <laughs> their model. They want. My thing is, why make a massive multi-online player game if you're not going to be engaged with the community <laughs> or the other players? Because even well, in MMOs, the vast majority of people. Are not always necessarily part of of large orgs, like, or they're not talking to CIG. It's just the most invested players. You're so invested that you have thousands of hours before the game's out. You're not even in the zero point zero zero one percentile. Hold on to you. Let's address this right now, Dirk. This is our game, right now. This whole discussing shit that we have no influence on whatsoever i the disagree we do it game. well to a certain extent go <laughs> to the base.sc go he, i i think you read the post go to the base.sc and read the blog post about content creators uh effect on cig's decision making and stuff and and read that and come up with a conclusion because while we do have eh, influence like uh siren said or, uh, sorry, Dirk said, it, we backed Chris Roberts to make the game. He's going to make the fucking game. If you don't like the game, then it's too bad. It really no. is. It's well, too bad. Well, I, I think I mentioned last week how I feel about content creators influencing, influencing the game. Is that when you told everybody to go fuck themselves? <laughs> hey, those you, the, you, the YouTubers that think they know everything about the game, just because they play YouTube, they play the games on YouTube or Twitch, um, CIG listens to the majority of the people that are having good discussions about the game. People that are putting out videos about how much they hate this or hate that or CIG screwed this up or you know threw this out the window after after all, all these years. Um, like I don't think they need to listen to those people. Part they of don't. what's they're, good, they're, they've said that already in that right, famous tweet won't. already. Good. But part of what's good about a, a 
a discussion like this is whether you mm -hmm. want to admit it or not there's a viewer from cig viewing this show they always do they fucking lurk in the thing and they just watch and listen is you could potentially spawn a idea or a thought or a concept that they had not potentially thought of in the past doesn't mean you're that's telling them what they need to do you're just putting a spark in their brain that says oh you know what that's something that we should probably that. think about and and they and they do watch all those people that are all the streamers that are playing the game and they're streaming it and that that there was um a, a couple of people a couple of devs that were saying it's like as they as they work they always have some stream going to watch how people are playing the current builds so that they see what's going on how are people are using it how how they're they're interacting with their ships where the problems are where the bugs are so and yeah and they 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 take all that feedback back i i just i i don't like when certain people think that they're so important that cig needs to listen to me because i'm an important youtube or twitch streamer i agree i want listen cig to put all of our on the mfds <laughs> to put what on <laughs> pong game <laughs> yeah right that, that would, be, would cool. be a good troll right that would uh, be cool just, <laughs> while you're sitting there waiting for landing clearance at fucking levski you could play an actual game I just made Moose uh, face quality off. shit post. Like, <laughs> no, I'm being serious. platinum level shit. Post. No, I'm being serious because, like, what if you're patrolling space and you're just waiting for maybe that interdiction and you're bored out of your mind? Let's get some Pong on the MFDs for crying out loud. That's why they made the Nintendo <laughs> Switch. <laughs> Don't give them ideas. I'm just gonna delay the game further. Until you know. Delay the game further. That's funny. Uh. Uh, so let's the game let's, was just delayed another year because let's of that. think about this for a second right because we kind of went around in a circle and when i was taking my urinary break I, I had a thought a lot of the issue is with engagement disengagement should people be locked into engagement blah 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 but at the level that we intend on playing at right disengagement is not going to be an issue right because we're talking about big fleet stuff and if you have an idris with five escorts and another group of people with a care uh kraken and a bunch of escorts that want to butt heads your engagement is guaranteed because if your escort ditches you uh, if you're the idris captain and you're leading a fleet with escorts if your escort ditches you because they're potentially going to lose the engagement what kind of shit is that going to start you're going to chew their ass, ass off yeah, but you, you know. do you think that do you think that's going to be the normal everyday engagement? That's like a it, planning and the, no, no. The, but it's it's going to be multiple ships against a single ship. The, that's going to be the, the most common occurrence. It's going to be you looking for the easy target. I'm again. I thought just said earlier that everyone's in one man orgs, so that goes against. No, no, no. But I said at <laughs> our level, you cocksucker. <laughs> So every word in my statement has meaning that you must absorb before you are allowed to open your mouth and let shit come out of it. Thank you very much. You fuck. So one on one, I don't think it's going to be as frequent as multiple on one or multiple on a few. So um, I think that, you know, the small skirmishes is going to be the, the norm in the game both against NPCs and against, you know, player versus player. Um, that being said, there will be large skirmishes, provided that CIG and the engine can handle it and permit it. But there, you know, there again, the cost is the barrier. The cost of, you, you know, you taking down another crew is going to cost you an exorbitant amount of money in terms of torpedoes, missiles, you know, losses to your own shit, you know, uh, repairs, all that stuff. So it's, um, you know, the cost for running larger operation is going to be one of the driving forces. Now, not everybody here cares about, you know, death of a spaceman and their life or their character. They just want to fly, die. Doesn't really matter. Some, I do. Some, pe lot. some people do care about their character and for those people the ability to escape is the ability to freedom which is to choose 
and that should be sacred in a universe simulator. It's not a combat simulator anymore. I can to a certain degree agree it used to be that when it was pitched, but it ain't a combat simulator anymore. It's a universe simulator. And the scope of the game is the freedom to choose what you want to do. So this is very hard for them to make something that makes people not being locked in engagement with you and not make something that would really, really break the game for people Thank like you. me. Thank you. <laughs> I, You're I welcome. Need that in my life. You just shit itself. Yep. Fucking <laughs> fucking camera. muted so you can hear it. <laughs> uh, no, I it. Um, uh, I um, uh, giving people the freedom to choose. I would argue that goes on both sides of the people that want to uh, to um, force combat. That that's the same amount of freedom that that people want to escape. That's you know that that should be afforded to people who seek combat and conflict. Well, I, 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 I think there, there's going to be a tremendous amount of, t of opportunity for people like you that seek that because there's so many people that they are coming here just for that. And I, I think that y'all will tend to gravitate to each other. And mm, when, once there's a much lot, I am, I, but right now, space, like I was saying, I, once there's more space, okay, well, they're going to know where, okay, Imperium's combat fleets are over here and whoever's other combat fleets are over here. And you guys, you're probably going to try to spend mo more time bumping heads because you're going to be fighting each other a lot and you're all going to be experienced, well-equipped, well-supported combat fleets. That's where the fun is for you guys. And I think that's going to draw people away from harassing people like Junto that just wants to haul cargo in their uh, in their freelancers. And me, mm, so just, the only reason I just wander around in my yacht. I would disagree with that is that um, when when the game actually comes out, you know, there will be that motivation to just find people who uh, want to fight you. There, but when the game comes out, there is going to be some risk involved. Um, and this is kind of getting back to what we talking about in talking about earlier. Uh, and so, some of us who are in the com combat community, you know, yeah, we want to find the good fight. Um, but we're not just going to like try and find, uh, you know, the people, uh, who, who want to fight us. It's who we run across and we want to force the fight. And sometimes that no, you're, uh, you're motivation so is, is purely, you like, know, for the good what, fight. What? Sometimes that motivation is just for, um, is for monetary gain. Yeah, but so you want to force the fight. And what you actually want to force is the start of the engagement. Mm -hmm. Everything after that is tactics and 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 luck. Skill comes in, but tactics, skills, and luck. You know, I was pointing this way, so I can just. Go ahead. Your missile missed. I can just go. You know, it's going to be some, some, uh, you know, my chaff and flares took out your EMP missile. I can just go. You know, it's, it's all of this stuff that comes into play uh, in, in all of this setting. So you will have to, not only that, you will, as a group, will have, we talked about this in the beginning. Uh, we talk a lot about one versus one, but it's usually you want to interdict me, you come with a ship that can interdict me. You know, that sure. means that one of you won't have that much fun. Mm -hmm. uh, I think one thing of his question Wait, was there. Was that a negative thing? No. No. I'm just saying, <laughs> if, you have an, if you have an interdiction ship, you can interdict me. I'm fine with that. If you mm -hmm. come in a ship without interdiction, you can just fuck off. Well, I'll, I'll be speeding I, along. I agree. Yeah, no, that's completely fair. That's that's fair. Completely yeah. fair. Well, I, I, well, I, I think those that, that have interdiction, there should be, uh, that should come at a cost for, mm -hmm. of, you know, say firepower. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And those that want the ability to run, that'll come at a cost too. So if I want to somehow have a better power plant to drive a, a more powerful engine so that if I see you, you can't come close to me because I could just vector 10 degrees to the starboard and fucking burn and get the hell out of there before you can even think about catching up to me. But to what uh, Jordan was going to say, this is great. What, what skill is there in killing players that don't want combat how fun is that it's not about fun innovus it's about fucking uh endorphins, endorphins. and do dopamine that's all it's about and monetary gain monetary, yeah. we, we do There's profit no off fucking monetary game from fucking <laughs> killing a Maybe scrub in an aurora 
well, maybe not yet, but you know that salvage. Right I mean, now, right now, the, 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 the guys, forcing I'm, combat I'm, is practice. You may not be benefiting right it. now, you're, except for the benefit of my hand tools. You know, wait, wait, waste your time no. scrapping a tiny aurora when you can go after you know, a caterpillar. You know, I, it, you're going to spend your time and if you if you really are going after a profit and not just fucking over little people, you're going to go after a caterpillar that's fully laden with cargo. Oh, of you're course. Not gonna fuck right. with, with, a, with a little aurora. I mean, there's no money in that. I mean, that's no, that's, that's more trouble than it's course. worth. Uh, it's an aurora. I'm not going to worry about it. I do it all the time. Or, or, or a mustang. We I see a mustang. Know. We don't even bother. But, or an M50. This... We don't even bother. This brings up a super good point, right? Because it was something that uh, Dirk and I were kind of like going back and forth in the chat about is one thing that's not being taken into consideration is resources, 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 resources will need to be found. They will need to be protected. They will need to be gathered. They will need to be refined. And all of the while, someone else is going to want to take those fucking resources from you. There is going to be more than enough fucking PVP non-disengagement oh, yeah. combat for you guys it, all this talk that we're having is going to be pointless because well, when I a big Jintel. fleet comes in and says oh let's just use imperium for an example imperium's got fucking three orions in a fucking field and they're trying to mine this fucking unobtainium and you got a whole unobtainium is the thing man it's fucking got real value in star citizen mm -hmm. um, and you have a combat I don't know escort. what it's escort, whatever you want to compliment, a combat compliment, guarding your shit. And a couple baddies come along with some serious firepower. They're not interested in fucking disengaging. So your cockpit shots better be on the fucking money because you're going to be engaging three or four targets instead of the one on one with the Aurora or the freelancer or something. Oh, of course. Now you for the pirates out there, it is what it is. You know, if they see a freelancer max, they're going to try to take the freelancer max because it's fucking easy target, right? You know, mm -hmm. it's like throwing a stick of dynamite in the fucking river with a net and fucking picking up the fish. You know, these are the engagements that I'm talking about being able to avoid. Uh, you know, whoever the pirate orgs out there, I don't know all of their names. I know some of them, but they're, they're camping a trade lane or something. I need to not be involved in that at all. You know, if I get interdicted. What's well, I was I trying get, to say I, earlier about like about the fact is, is like, you know, getting the punishment for being getting into the situation is, I guess, what I was trying to say earlier. Well, OK, so I, I got actually two points on uh, even in that. Um, and that kind of comes down. We, we don't fully know what the PU is going to be yet especially when it comes to territories. We know there's going to be territories. Imperium's going to probably own a, a sector of space. And I'm going to use Eve as an example, just in that that kind of mentality. Um, you know, I'm sure Test is going to have a sector in space. And they're probably going to compete over the most valuable resources. And and there is going to be that kind of driven PvP where they might want a certain you know area of space just for that resource. And that's completely fine. Um, that being said, too, with your example of, you know, the Orions and everything, um, and this is kind of where running is not a valuable option. If you're hired as a, a, to be an escort, you better fight to the death. You right. do not run. You do not leave your escort, you know, the people you're supposed but to attack. that's a choice. That's a choice. Yeah, well, that's a choice. But then, you know, if somebody runs from the combat and doesn't fight to the death, yeah, but they're that's, probably that's, not going to get rehired, Kenzie. Yeah, yeah, but that, that's fine. That's a choice that you choose to stay and fight because that's what you're paid to do. But yeah. you can also choose to be a coward. Okay. Do you agree? Yep, I agree. But again, if you if you do run, you know, chances are you're not going to be hired again to be a protector. Mm -hmm. No, oh, yeah, it, it'll affect your ability to be an escort because you didn't do a good job. Like, like your reputation yeah, will go that down. Word, that will affect your reputation. Go, yeah, yeah. And and. But, Getting back to what you were saying, Jintel, too, about like, you know, these pirate orgs that have certain sectors of space themselves or pirate lanes or whatever, you know, that's going to be some of that intel you're going to need to know and maybe even research or plot your path through space to wherever you're trying to get. So you can make those good judgments. OK, well, is this risky or is this not risky? And if I do get interdicted, holy crap, it was my dumb choice for going through somewhere where you, I know there might have been pirates. Will, there right. will be no system where you can't be interdicted. I'm pretty damn sure of it. You, safest UE space as soon as you go out of the uh, you go out in the fringes in 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 some of these systems 
you being interdicted or you, you going between a you know one of the rich asteroid fields and and the station UAE is not going to be ever present they're going to be patrolling in the area so there will be a time for them to arrive it's not going to be like i stopped you i'm engaging you here's the uee no i ha will have to use tactics to stay alive long enough for them to get there okay so there's no safe there's safer areas but there's no safe zones relative levels of risk well yes because if you go back to what tony was talking about about probability volumes and stuff if you are on a major trade lane that is directly between two nodes of production whatever they might be your probability of encountering something will be considerably higher as if you were off on the fringe end of space where there's nothing out there so you'll have to pick and choose as me as the freelancer guy trying to just you know cart his space weed from one place to the other i'll have to pick and choose my routes carefully to try to avoid that shit, but it doesn't eliminate the probability you will have to you exactly. pay a little bit more in space fuel by or quantum fuel by going towards one of the moons that takes you off the you know common beat basically the common route right and then you stop and then you s s align yourself again and then it goes so you're way out of the normal path and that way you know you can do that multiple times remember they talked about you will be able to trace as well so there's there's so many avenues back and forth that's both encounter and 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 where, where you will actually have to be make sure I'm not even being followed because if I stop here, I can't stop too long. I will have to stop, realign, go again because there, somebody might be on my trail. That's and with the idea of scanning and quantum, what the hell did they call it? Quantum trails or some shit like that now that yeah. ships are going to be leaving? <laughs> you don't even know because all that. you know about is wicked pew pew. Um, these fucking guys. Uh, that's I'm just saying. Thing, a lot of factors that <laughs> that, that, that's that's another part of the balance. You are, you are wanting to engage a target, and that's another thing of the following. That's another part of the uh, balance. You are, yeah, you're following somebody that you know is slower, but it's going to take you five minutes to catch up to the point where you can disable them. Then you will have to get oh, to stop. Minutes, then you will have geez. to get away. Yep. That's not time to kill. That's time to catch up again because you were stupid enough to point in the wrong direction. That's your okay. Oh, got it. Okay. That, that's fair. All right. <laughs> and you're making this choice, and he's calling his buddy. They're on their way as you're doing all this stuff. You get there, you're boosting away already, but they can pick up your trail and follow you wherever you go because you have a unique si engine signature. So okay. you're saying that they just induced a griefing mechanic into the game with quantum trails that i could just follow you forever not forever probably but at least there well, there's that's they, another they said, aspect of they it they said if, if if you weren't very close to them that they would start to degrade so if much time passed then you wouldn't be able to follow them anymore so that's gonna be yeah. a big question like how long is it gonna last a few hours a few days right Probably only a short while. I, I would imagine I, only thirty seconds, but that's just yeah. That's not, I would imagine. Yeah, uh, hopefully, hopefully not long at all. Most but that the, if if I'm pretty sure it's going to last long enough if somebody's actually coming to help somebody, but they're coming too late. It's now a revenge party, right? And As guess, it should be. Yeah, that's it should be. Yeah. Well, they, well they they I was I was actually on comms. It was like I was in a fleet with Jintao, and someone took one of the Imperium ships. And we were just minding our own business. Someone took one of the Imperium of his ships. And then he went off and we spent, what, like 15, 20 minutes trying to find this guy. We ended up not sure. finding him because we don't have the tools available to track him down. Mm -hmm. But, had but that's, tools what, that's what became, became He'd be dead as fuck. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's what became. So that guy who took party. my fucking chip, just remember, when that shit's in game, you're fucking over. I'm coming for you. Yeah. Right. There will be consequences. I got friends, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> I think the I can blow you out of the water, Jim, but I'll get you back any day. <laughs> we agree more than we disagree. It's just that there's some nuances in here that's tilting toward your type of gameplay, and there's some nuances that we want that's tilting more towards what we consider fair gameplay. So we have a different assumption of what should be considered as fun for everybody. And, uh, and I 
I think that that'll be balanced by the environment and how you plan for uh, for potential um, risk uh, risk assessments. And if you, if you're going to be going someplace that's going to be dangerous and you don't take an escort, then and you, you may not be able to get away. Here's another great scenario that CIG could implement, right? To to alleviate uh, XLB and Moose's concerns about the the guys who want to run, right? Is interdiction by other means. You get engaged by a pilot that decides he doesn't want to fight you and he starts boogieing. Well, what if he runs into a handful of pirates that slow him down and allow you to catch him? Pirates is the NPCs or the players? Uh, NPCs, because it's the only thing that we can count on spawning randomly throughout the thing. So the system, in theory, could be able to understand that this guy is trying to boogie and he was the aggressor. Because first shot and all that shit's going to be recorded, you know? It can all be calculated into so, an algorithm. Oh, so like other like police or something, pirates? Well, just pirates, man, or whatever. Whoever's in that area that could stop this guy from moving. I'd say that guy is very unlucky. That would be great, <laughs> though, wouldn't it? Addiction, and really <laughs> gets caught by another one. That's a really I, bad day right there. I, I, that's I hope we don't get interdicted that. as much as we do now. God. By a giant <laughs> asteroid. I'm sure some systems, you know. might. But that that is another tool that you could use as you're trailing somebody because when they're quantuming away, they might be quantuming away in a completely random direction, if you know what I mean by that. So they might stop at some point and try and do some repairs and you can trail them as they're doing things. So that's another balance in this as well. Do you think that CIG will ever implement a KOS list in the Moby Glass that if you fucking scan a ship that's a, on your KOS list that tells you this guy's a cocksucker, you need to kill? I don't think I don't think that it, there needs to be. That can be a third party application. That can be something that well, orgs start by themselves. Or well, I mean, like I mean, I mean, I guess like. It, a notepad maybe but more well, that's, like that's know, the, there is a website dedicated the there's, there's gonna they're already gonna be a something like that that's gonna call the being the bounty hunter the, 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 the bounty the some and I, I i would assume that a lot of orgs are going to have that that kill on site list for certain people that um i i would, would we've we've got the the plans for that in, in our org that um I mean, among jump jump owners if somebody happens to attack a an, an unescorted a jump owner who's just out on vacation minding their own business um that per the list for the jump accord and the entire rest of of the org is going to marshal their fleets to bring the holy hell down on whoever it is that that uh, that, that will be future consequences even if there may not be at that moment but between bounties and revenge and uh, and friends, um, and that there will be other consequences. Mm -hmm. uh, that just seems like more work um, on CIG that I, I would rather not see delay the project any further than than need be. Where, that, that's something I, I would you know would say that that's that's on the community. That's on certain orgs to develop their own KOS or cost list. Yeah, outside um, of the bounty CIG. system. But the uh, bounty system bounty is hunting. going to be a major part of the gameplay. Yeah. You know, you Absolutely. being part of a bounty hunter guild, you will already get those, you know, uh, you will, by scanning somebody, it doesn't matter if you're on the planet or down or out in space, as long as you can communicate, that's, you're scanning somebody, that's a bad guy, that's a free-for-all. I thought that was real, real interesting how Tony Z was describing the whole bounty hunter profession. It's not something I really have interest in uh, my, myself, but I know how well developed that entire gameplay mechanic seems to be in in his mind. In that it, you have to register as a bounty hunter to be able to get onto the system list where you get the, those list of bounties in those systems and, and other systems. People may may break laws within different law law areas, where they they may have broken this group's laws, but that's not really against the laws of this other group, and that might be in the same star system, like Microtech versus Arcorp versus Hurston. You might break a law in Hurston that okay, well in Arcorp that's not really against the law. The independent bounties out there, so I mean that, that was real fascinating. 
and um, and also how your reputation as a bounty hunter will affect your ability to get certain bounties and uh, and collect that information when you go into a new system. So it's kind of like if you're not actually technically a bounty hunter and actively pursue and you don't actually have access or you may not have access to the list of bounties, which I thought that was interesting. So I think I would just probably like, that's one of the things I think we just need to wait and see what they do with it. Mm. I mean, it's like mining. We didn't know what mining was going to mm. be like, and I don't know about anybody else, but mining is absolutely phenomenal. Well, that blew me they, out of the water. They knocked that out well, of the park. <laughs> Okay, so, so I know I know you disagree about flight model and all this stuff, but I will have to say that flight model isn't done. But what I've seen so far, even with the fluctuation, it's better than anything that I've ever played or flown in space before, by miles. I would agree. So, so yeah. with that statement being said, I struggle to find anything that CIG has done that isn't amazing, and well thought through. And I think or at least fixed just eventually. Takes time. That's oh, key. I think it takes time. He just got triggered by that statement. Yeah. Look at his eyebrow. <laughs> Ew. <That's twi> <laughs> Dude, some... yeah. I would say that when you don't know where you're going, the road is so open that you have to just take a path. And if it's not the path, then you have to correct that path. And it, which is what they're doing with the flight model. They're you know, there's been so much back and forth on the flight model. We've seen it change, not dramatically, but we've seen it change from every patch. It changes a little bit. And sometimes it's a good change. And sometimes like the 3.0 change, not so good. <laughs> I, I don't think it was that good. Yeah. I mean, the 3.3 the FM right now, it's not bad, right? But it just seems a little too unrealistic. I would agree. You know, so what, and then what, how we what, what parts unrealistic? The the lateral thrust at a hundred percent of main hmm. thrust doesn't seem oh, like yeah. Yeah, it what should we have, be that. What way. we have now. Yeah, yeah. In three point yeah, three. Okay. I mean it's good, it feels okay, but it's just a lot know, of the problems can be attributed to bugs as opposed to there's no bugs. Just, there's, no, there's no bugs. There's no such thing as bugs in, in Star Citizen. This is all part of uh, what does Jared call it? The uh, something about the de de development. Something. I don't know what he says, but he's he has some excuse for everything being broke. I would. You, know. you wouldn't know. You don't listen to Jared. I, I I've heard it. I don't know. I can't remember off the top of my head what you're yeah. talking about. Oh, I know what he says. That's why they call it development instead of construction. <laughs> I, I know I, I'm I'm in construction, and it is a messy, messy process. It is complicated. You screw stuff up, and we have errors that cost tens of thousands of dollars. And it's like, all right, well, try not to do that again. So Imagine I, I, if I, you had to develop the bulldozer, and the crane, and all of the other tools that you use in construction prior to building a building because that's what cig did yeah it, it's it's incredible what they've done so you know what's funny is going back to you know moose you said okay. delays cig making me brian chambers that's why we have brian chambers that is why <laughs> we have <laughs> and Tony Zura. but um crazy delays i mean and and i don't necessarily by that term delays i mean according to their own internal estimates on how things are moving and what timeline they think they're going to meet you know okay one delay i will give cig with squadron 42 2016 bad move bad fucking move right oh, oh, but other course. than that there, there you can't put a time frame around developing new technology because you really don't know how long it's going to take so they give us their best estimate and then, like Chris was saying, well, we thought OCS was going to take like six to eight months, and it took yeah about three years. Yeah, yeah, you know. So, yeah. and that, and these are the things that happen when you're trying to create shit from scratch in your own way. And uh, I, I give them all the slack in the world for that shit. You know, no, I, I, I thought it was game. interesting. I, I don't know if you if you guys saw the interview with one of the devs on uh, Cyberpunk 2077 uh, er, earlier this week, but he, at, as and I, I don't know if you guys are, are even following it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, okay, everybody's following it. So I mean, it, if you saw the gameplay play playthrough um, a couple of months ago, I mean, it looks freaking amazing. It looks it looks like it's almost done. 
but it's not. and then this inter this interview last week he said it's like we're in very we're still in very early stages very early yeah, stages and Travis didn't watch that demo yeah and they, <laughs> they, they they've, they've been going for the exact same time period that star citizen has I mean they started uh, started uh, the announcement for for that in in 2012 and they had an existing studio and they had a whole team fully in place to yep. start on this on this new game the time that, that we've taken and you heard almost nothing about it until we saw the uh, the, the gameplay um, from gamescom and I think they still have a very long way to go so I I don't think we really have any delays I think they, they they've miscommunicated expectations but exceptionally is, bad yeah <laughs> it's I, bad but, points but but at, at what other game has ever had completely open development and done something groundbreaking you know, like like Junto is saying I, they've they have to make all this up as they go along and doing something nobody's ever done before from the 64-bit um uh, uh calculations to ocs and server meshing and and multicore uh, Support uh, hypothetical yeah. support. All, all all of this stuff is, um, I and mean, they're they're pushing the boundaries and it takes longer than expected. You know, like you know, I'll go back to in, in my job, I I make promises of expectations. It's like okay, we're gonna have your windows in four months. It's like all right, well it takes five months. Sorry, we're late. I mean, we're always late. Um, High-end schedule, so I, I've got a lot of tolerance for for CIG taking a little bit longer than even they think. And I right right now, I, there's people that are agitating. It's like, oh well, CIG's missed their deadline. It's after October first, and you know, it's like rah, 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 pitchfork, pitch, fit, pitchfork. Um, I, they're so damn close. Oh, yeah, I, I they're so close. There's no way in 3.3 .3 with what went in the past. I mean, I think they're doing a tremendous job this year of staying on schedule or so close to schedule that it's immaterial, at least from my perspective. Well, I think a, a big thing is that it, people are bored. Like, legitimately bored. There's no fucking good games, man. I find myself playing fucking City Skylines. Hold are up. you kidding? Nintendo Switch Starlink. I've, I've dumped 70 hours into that, like, within the <laughs> past week. That game is actually pretty good. Right, because you're bored. Well, I'm bored, but it was a good game. It's, and it I, is I, a good game. It's, I, I, I have so little tolerance for other games, there's almost nothing that, it, that interests me. I, I, that's I, fair. I, I, I did actually break down a couple of months ago and got Elite Dangerous for the first time. Um, and I played about 50 hours. And so I'm glad that I did, because now I have... A, a much better understanding of, of how different it is between what the, what they they have done and are doing and what we've got um and like i like space trucking and that's really not something i get to do in star citizen like cargo is it is really meaningless at, at, at this point um so i i got to space truck for about 50 hours run missions delivering pick, picking up stuff delivering stuff um ramp ramp okay. from uh, to a second tier ship, to a third tier ship, and I, I think it's it's a it's a good corollary model. In um, I mean, that's nothing we haven't actually talked about: is spaceship prices, the um, uh, ca cash to in-game spaceship prices, which came out this week. We've got some interesting information, but working way up from an entry-level ship like an Aurora to a Titan to a Freelancer to your your next tier ships. Um, I, I thought it was interesting how they did it. Um, and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how we start seeing this here in in 3.3 and 3.3.5, um, because the values of the ships are pretty huge. Hammerheads 21 million. Um, you know, when I think a, that's Aurora's, pretty cheap, actually. Yeah, for I, I, for, I, I, for what it is. I, I, I think what? a lot of the ships are underpriced. I, I agree. What? You mm -hmm. hear me out, Jintao. Hear me out. Yeah. Okay. What? Um, if you were to go on a mining run. And, and if you get the right resources here, even in yellow that we have right now, you can make 40,000 credits right now. I've done it. Yep. And mm -hmm. if you were to take, again, a capital ship such as a That's, hammerhead. Yeah, this is just the prospect he's talking about. He's not taking into consideration yet the Orion and some of these other capital ships where yeah. the amount of monetary gain increases exponentially um, from, from these lower tier ships. Well, well what, what's going to be important to see is is how the, the money making potential is on those intralocal. 
that I was doing in 3.2 is, okay, well, I, I would take an Aurora and I'd go run box delivery missions, which is a little difficult in Aurora, but you can. Um, and I make 340 to 800 UEC in about, and there, there was a post here, I think, um, <laughs> by the guy who's, who's designing the, the economy and their metrics are currently showing that people are playing an average of 30 to 40 minutes and they're making about 1700 UEC in, in that, that period of time. So our, if an entry level player is making on average about 3,400 UEC, say with an Aurora or something at that, at that scale, they, they see that it's taking about three days of playtime or three hours to be able to upgrade some components on that ship. Um, that's going to take a while to scale up to a million plus what, I, what what's a prospector 1 1.2 1 1.4 million or something something like that and that's good. yeah so hello uh, or to like an avenger titan which would be the tier two ship which is a 20 dollar increase in cash i i think it's going to be interesting to see um the the ship rental mechanic uh to be able to let people to be able to make a little bit of money afford to buy something and then what what are the um uh penalties for somebody just renting a ship and then not returning it or blowing it up or, or whatnot you know we, we have real world but what are they going to implement in the game if they make ship renting um a, an important part of that ship progression yeah uh, it's a fee you know you you, you pay up front uh, for renting it, so so if you late, you pay a you know a late fee, or you can call in and say I want to rent it a little bit more. Um, if you lose it, there will have to be a fee on the insurance. You know, you you pay whatever percentage it is for for the for you know for the loss of the ship, uh, just so there's no misuse of the renting system. And and getting back to the hammerhead price of being too cheap um, with the prospector again, this is just a prospector. Um, it's a multi crew ship, uh, cap ship, whatever you want to call it. The hammerhead. The hammerhead. Um, you know, I, I, there's a, a guy in SC4, I can't remember exactly who it is, but shout out to him. He broke it down. It's pretty much just 20 players, two hours each. You have a hammerhead. Mm -hmm. That's relatively cheap. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, I know not everybody's in a large org, but these large orgs, they can just probably pump out hammerhead after hammerhead after hammerhead because they're going to be able to get that resource really easily. And like a, a an, um, a modern day aircraft carrier, only a, a country with the earning potential of the can afford an aircraft carrier. So in game, that's the equivalent of a large org. If you have enough people that are earning and contributing to that, um, it sound like I you have experience from from Eve. Yeah, I more, played it, more but I've always kind of <laughs> I've 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 watched it as a model. I never it was too complicated for me, but I thought it was very interesting that when they first came out with the Titans, they didn't think that there would be ever be more than five or six Titans in the game, nope. if I if I recall. Um, and that there was just this huge, massive, um, multi multi org battle a, a couple of months ago where fifty six Titans were lost in this battle. Um, so as as a matter of org wealth accumulation to be able to purchase large ships like in in our world the idrises and krakens and javelins and hammerheads um they're going to be kind of wealth uh, real world cash prices are such a huge discount on this because right right now at 725 dollars if you were to purchase a hammerhead and at 1,000 UEC to one dollar, at 725,000 UEC, it's a multiple of 30 times increase in value from your current cash price to the in-game price, and that tra translates across to other ships like with the Prospector at 155 dollars, ten and a half time multiple to 1.6 million. Um, so I, I, I think it's interesting. All these people that are buying the really big ships for cash now. I, Investment, uh, I think we lost you there for a second. Yeah, I but I, think oh, right, I fro the last five again. seconds of the conclusion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Buying. Yeah. Good. Talking. God damn it. God damn so, it. <laughs> so I do want to say though, I am okay if it is relatively mm -hmm. cheap, and I think Moose actually brought this up. Yeah. Is 
how much combat is actually going to happen in it for mm -hmm. it to uh, basically be that cheap to replace it so you can get more engagements and right. basically maybe even lose it. So, right. Just and again, more that, content. Mm -hmm. The cost of upgrading the ship because when you get the hammerhead, it's going to be stuck and you want to have just like you want your ship to be absolutely spec towards your game style. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a meta for that one as well which mm -hmm, you course. just want to have and that's going to cost more than the ship itself mm -hmm. it's going to be very expensive and then comes yeah. assurance on top of that you know in, in a big fashion even if you have lti and you don't have to upgrade the hull like everything else on the ship is needs its own insurance because it's been upgraded oh i don't and think everything gonna... on the ship needs insurance it was the well, ship hull, you know new, new, okay new, the, but the every, hull, every module hull? no yes no Every up, every aftermarket thing you upgrade will need insurance. They've already talked no. about that. There, there yes. should be some kind of if you lose that module, there should be some kind of loss. That's the point of losing and the that, module. Well, they've already talked about it's the lat loss is you pay way more than the whole insurance for that and up up you know the that insurance. We want to make sure have that manufacturers have a place to actually manufacture. Yes. Mm -hmm. So insurance might not be the best. I, I don't know. This is just me saying it. Like, you want to make sure that people that are interested in manufacturing or even whatever the, the system will be, that that is in place and the, profitable for them. Buying from NPCs should not be the player's go-to. Uh, it sh what players should buying, go to buying is buying what? from other players. Buying what? Ships, modules, everything. Why? Everything that NPCs sell should be manufactured or should be able you know, players should be able to manufacture that yeah but that's with the exception the of like i don't i don't know like and this is you know drawing from eve if they have some officer grade modules so those the f8 yeah those that's, would be the, that's the not, exception that's that's is not something they've discussed in detail at all yet yeah what no that's well, what i said we have to wait for what it. they've talked about in terms of production is that you will have control of nodes, you know, the factory that's producing this stuff. And at some point, they might allow you to do storefronts. At some, but that's not that they're not saying they've basically said not at launch, but at some time after launch. So, like yeah, a regional we'll, market, we'll be able to sell an advocate for regional markets. Be able to sell things between each other in game. Mm -hmm. but not necessarily manufacturer. Um, in the early uh, economy uh, post on Spectrum, before Spectrum, I mean, many years ago, um, they did talk about players potentially controlling... Crap. He's about to say something interesting every time, then he cuts out. God damn it. It's always when you're about to make a point that I want to hear, and then suddenly you just freeze. Damn it. Very unfortunate. Damn it. Damn it. Am, am I back? Yep. Yeah. Kind of, ah, but start talking, it'll change. Yeah, yep. Jesus Christ. I didn't, I, and it's like, it's particularly bad tonight, <laughs> too. Um, it, we'll be able to control manufacturing nodes and supply nodes. Um, uh, and Tony Z to touched on that on his panel. Um, but it's mostly going to be player to player sales of existing manufactured goods. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like so to see you're what not going to be. You, go you're not going to be the. You're not going to be in a manufacturer. You're going to just be controlling the factory that does stuff for you. But you're well, not going to sure. be touching it. Yeah. But I think that it really depends on the scope of the player base over time. If there are, you know, 10, 15, 20 million people playing this game, that they're going to have to implement greater gameplay options for people, i.e., the whole industrialist aspect of it you know, of uh, people owning multiple factories and multiple mining facilities and controlling a, a game with inside a game, the whole sim citizen thing and all this crazy shit. So we'll see where that leads. But they, they left the possibility for that. It, well, he's doing something he shouldn't be doing, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> but uh, they left the possibility there that we will be able to, to do some sort of industrial gameplay you know the only problem i have is some of the some of the arguments being made that it should be a 100 percent player controlled economy i don't i don't know if i agree with that or not i don't think absolutely not well we're only 10 percent of the total economy right and that, that's that that's really a, an important distinction between eve and star citizen 
is that 90% of the economy is going to be controlled by NPCs and CIG. Well, I don't know how else you would do it. I don't, I don't like that. At how all. else would you do it in a fucking world that has hundreds of star systems with a multitude more planets and, and population and shit? If you don't have an NPC driven economy, there will just be straight up dead systems. Just dead. There will be nothing there besides resources. There will be no life. And you'll end up with a totally imbalanced economy like Eve. Except I like the imbalanced economy in Eve. A lot that's, of people think it's cool. that's that's, most, that's most you said it's always that's negative. I, I really like that concept. <laughs> yeah, I like the inflation, which is just so high that there's not enough zeros. Well, I think what one thing that the people that are making the argument for a player controlled economy missed way back in the day was Chris Roberts specifically said in these words, I am yeah, not I making that. Eve two. He's not. No. Well, so and, and as much as the community wants to jump up and down at the content creator. <laughs> Sorry, man. Bitch and moan. <laughs> like this. Just not going to happen. And then we do like this. Yeah. Okay, well, wait, 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 wait. And then like this. <laughs> Everything subject and, to change. Everything. And that's subject. true. So, so if it comes out that it's a good idea, and what I think is more likely to happen is regionally <laughs> player-controlled economies. Like, I, I, I don't see it being that – it, it will be player-influenced economies, and I, I think very telling was Tony Z's uh, panel, and hopefully I don't freeze up again, um, that, that he is trying to create – the most dynamic free market system where there's demand, there's supply, there's um, prices fluctuate, supplies fluctuate. If you affect the supply chain, you're going to affect the production capacity um, and the prices. And and the prices. And I, it, I mean, I'm, I'm that's my my primary non gaming hobby is free market economics. And he is just incredibly, I phd level uh understanding of how this system sh should work and I mean, if you really want to understand what's going on with the economy go back and watch any tony zurovic interview from the beginning um i froze again didn't i um yeah, in, in, uh in in his first yeah. from his first yeah. interview when he was brought on <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, and it, it, he really talks about how he's going, how the economy eventually, and it's fascinating. Yeah, you should yeah. listen to Tony Servic if you want to have any insight to the economy. Yeah, should we go to questions? We're fucking over. And we have all those questions. Want to go like? That's all we I have. Warwolf asks a lot of questions. The rest of you failed epically. Epically. <laughs> yep, it did, and it's over. Ah, right. So we don't want to do that then. <clears throat> Wolf, do you think a change in flight mechanics would encourage players to use the ships more in their intended role, e.g., circle strafe in Carthal, stealth and saber, as opposed to old model circle strafe, everything. Yes. Your ship, I think that's the point of it. Right? Yeah. Your ship, yeah, your ship and its capabilities should determine its. You can use whatever ship for whatever thing you want, but okay. if you want to be effective, it should be. You should choose a specific ship for a specific role. No one else. I'm sorry. What, what was the question? <laughs> no, no, no. no. Sorry, we, 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 we couldn't hear. We couldn't hear. Uh, pepperoni or bacon? Bacon. Um, <laughs> so pepperoni, for, for not fake pepperoni. I would choose pepperoni. There's for, you, prosciutto. Should you, choose, should you choose ships based on their role, their capability, like cart roll for strafing, yeah. something else for yeah, etc. A hundred percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There should be if you're saying if, if ships should have like a certain roles, uh, and yeah. they fit that role better, then yeah. And flight yeah, like, characteristics. Uh, one like the saber should have an, an inferior uh, rolling capability than the hornet. That's one way to counter the saber is to get on top of below it with the hornet. And one way to get on top of below the hornet is either a vertical strafe or a roll, and you know a, ver and a vertical he's strafe. He's doing this thing. Yeah, so like you know like this like thing. He's Chris so, Roberts right now. I'm <laughs> gesticulating everywhere. <laughs> um, but that sh that that should be a thing. Uh, 
um, some ships will will have um, uh, have their greater advantages. potential. Yeah, exactly. They have their advantage disadvantages and greater potential at at certain maneuvers than others. Question or a follow up to that. Mm -hmm. um, Let's say that the Hornet or Super Hornet or all of them um, actually have a massively larger tank cap capability, mm -hmm. yeah, armor. It okay. doesn't matter that you penetrate the shield, the armor can withstand way more than a light ship. It's only a slightly, you know, it's, it still has its skills as it has today, which means that it's good at something, but not good at the other thing. So, um, but you as a, you know, it, it, do you see that a tank would allow a slower play like myself, a slight advantage? I would stay alive longer for me to get hit on target. Depends on the ship. Well, if yeah, we're using the Hornet, like you just said, then, um, yeah. In theory. In theory. Yeah. And and Did I you... know there was a, a argument, too. We also need to look not just on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but you do need to kind of look at um, roles. Two vanguards should easily be able to take out two hornets. Um, and again, this comes down to fair and everything. And the, those vanguards should be tankier. Mm -hmm. um, it should allow you to have a, a greater little firepower too. Greater firepower, but also that room of error or even learning capability. But that kind of comes into skill later too, where if you have superior skill, maybe you can actually. And, and that's a whole dynamic in issue. But they're so. bigger and heavier, and they therefore should be slower. Which, they should be. Yeah, a little bit. Which is sort of well, that's, exactly the, what, that's, uh, that's why we're talking about uh, we're, we're talking more than just a one v one because um, well two hornets should be able to shred apart uh, vanguard but two vanguard should be able to easily take out two hornets while while the two hornets are engaging on one vanguard uh, the, the other van vanguard trying to compensate and you know, you know bring its nose to bear the other vanguard can back off and, and so it, you can reduce the amount of uh, 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 maneuvers that the Damage Vanguard has to take in order to get its nose on target mm -hmm. and can start taking shots at the Hornets. And I think you sort of answered good... what was next question with that. Because he yeah. says, like, well, given the deep flight was, was possibly did going to... Did you wash his hand? What? My question did. was, did I you did. wash your hands? Okay. I did. Oh, God. <laughs> 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 well, Wolves' next all question was: Given that the new flight model is possibly going to favor some other ship, some ships over others, should all ships be balanced to be equally viable, or should they be fair, i.e., have different strengths and weaknesses? Yeah, there should be some sort of specialization for each ship. Um, oh, yeah, sure. Like, like the one it should be the 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 brawler. yeah the, the pinnacle at brawling, uh, the saber. You know, it, it has the potential to brawl, but it's more of a stealth fighter. As opposed to a, a brawling dogfighter that the Hornet is. Gladius is an interceptor. Vanguard is a tanky, heavy hitting fighter. And kind of just Short sits there and, absor and absorbs damage and dishes it out. Short follow up to that. Chris's statement that a fully crewed, fully specced, skilled constellation Andromeda. Should mm -hmm. be able to take out three super hornets. Same no. equal respect. No. Wait, wait, wait out of date. That was like five years ago. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm just saying. Should it be one, two? Depends. Mm, I still say no because the constellation, especially right now, yeah. in its current iteration, no, no. is more of a player fighter. skill. We can, yeah, we can't really talk about it. Finish, fin finishing the game. Finishing game. Finishing game. What, what, yeah, what should say... be the balance power? No, if you're if you're talking about like one v one or three v one against the constellation, should it be able to take out any of them? I would argue no. It's it's Why? not a military vessel. Well, it's, it's too probably, much it's fighting. If the Hornet pilots are don't know what they're doing, that's a different story. No, no, it, people in the ship doing something. They're do let's say you you have a missile operator, which can be very effective. You have and you have a lot of missile to spam. Uh, mm -hmm. You have very effective turrets if you have good turret operators. Then you have a very good pilot that's very good at f talking to its turret operators. You have the single-seater fighter that can drop to, let's say, do a mosquito bite here and there to just, you know, if, if they st try to stay on target, they can come up from behind and, and damage them a little bit that way. Mm -hmm. So you have all of this factor coming in. Everybody's playing at their best. 
How I would say I would say two hornets. I would say two horn. I would say two hornets against a constellation. All things considered, all things max skills all the way up there. Coin toss 50-50. Half the time the Connie comes out, half the time the horn two hornets come out. That's I might agree I with that. I don't, I don't, I don't know. know. Remember the the I'd, turrets I'd agree on the constellation. The like the 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 man turrets. It's two badgers. I well, can't. That, wait that, that could change though. They, they could. They could. Balance could change. On, on, the like, fuck what, you what right in your pooper. But potentially, but I, I, I think two hornets against the Connie. I, depending. That seems like a fair fight to me on paper. Two hornets versus the Connie. Because the, the, the weakness of the Connie is it, its guns are forward facing, its missiles are forward facing, and if you're behind it, you don't have very good fields of fire with the turrets. And the hornets can stay behind, keep, keep, keep time on target with. The, the, uh, the, the county maneuverability is very minimal. Free, free flight, free flight in one direction and turn. You, you cannot overtake and come to the other side. That's a super s simple tactic, although you have to bear you know, a bigger target for a while while you free flight the, around. The county has but, very but, but again, ability. But, but again, we go back to roles though, right? Like, although mm -hmm. the, like the, the horn, if we're talking about the Hornet right now, the Hornet, while a brawler, would still be able to should be able to outmaneuver a connie meaning that if you're a decent pilot you know where the blind spots are and you, and you know how to fly technically you would that pilot should have the ability you would think to be able to maneuver in a blind spot so if you have two hornets you should be able to take advantage of the weaknesses of the connie so how does the mm -hmm. connie prevent that well then you have your turrets right so then the balance would then come into play and then you also have the engineering station maybe if, if you know you have a good engineer who can who can keep those shields uh you know balanced wherever they're getting hit or you know, whatever the case may be, then that's what I'm saying. Like where the multi crew comes in that play, that's how you can that's how you True. can negate some of the some of those weaknesses that the Connie has against the strengths of the Hornet. So that's why, like for me, I, I still stick with like I said, two skilled Hornets against the Connie. I would say it's a it's a coin toss. I would say maybe two Vanguards, just because they have the tanking potential. But I, 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 see, I, see, I would say I would say two Vanguards would be a 75-25 Vanguards. Okay. Um, well, I do want to kind of go into actually something that happened last night, uh, kind of on the same topic of, of, you know, the Connie versus the Hornets here. Um, there was some testing that was going on. I was unable to make it uh, in a focus group test. And it was like, you know, two, two Hornets against a Hammerhead. Hammerhead always won. Mm -hmm. um, but then once it was five Hornets versus the Hammerhead, um, the, the Hammerhead got overwhelmed. And for me, I still, it, of course, this isn't with like max cannons on on the hammerhead there was repeaters and with current mechanics and the flight model that we have now so obviously things are subject to change and, but i still and the think hammerhead is really weak right now and right it, it's well, time to kill it. is really they did weak. just buff the yeah, shields. They, they, they buffed they buffed the shields a lot but did they buff well, the actual armor value of the body that's I, I, that i can't confirm um and, and again i i just don't think five hornets should be able to always win or overwhelm it i think it should be a Not lot a drawn out Mm -hmm. There, there's a serious, yeah. serious mechanic that's lacking also from the hammerhead. That's that's for a a, a target accusator on the hammerhead to fo call focus fire and that popping up in all all turrets, and you can then well, like pinning. focus fire on one target really yeah. quickly. They hit. They had that. That used to be in. I don't know, like why they haven't. Yeah, been but what he's saying is that. having some sort of uh, secondary crewman calling targets, and it automatically pinning it to all. You know, to right. your starboard or your gunners. Yeah, they used to have, or like Star Citizen used to have that. I don't know why they got rid of it, and I don't know why it hasn't been reintroduced. Probably just back pinning. Pinning. Uh, yeah, bring back pinning. <laughs> it was there, and it was great. Hey yeah, guys, you hear that? Where's pinning? Damn it. Pin targets. Wanna pin. So, oh, yeah. so before you ask the next question, let's do this, because there was another question that rolled by, and I know we weren't freaking taking questions at that point, but it's a good question. Max asked, what do you guys see the role as the cutlass then in all of this bullshit? The Kaiser role, I think it was said. Yeah, somebody said that. But honestly, from like a, red a, a an actual ongoing perspective of the game, it, you know, it's a great multi-purpose ship. I mean, it, it's, yeah. it's a good cargo yeah, hauler. It's, yeah, and it, it's it's good for a lot of thir I mean, tier tier three level mi mission running. It's got pre pretty good um, pretty good weapons loadout. Very flying. good cargo capacity. Yeah, I feel I feel like there should be a high ceiling with mm -hmm. the cutlass when it comes to knowing the ship and what it can do like i, I that's kind of I like you know it's a jack of all trades master of none but yeah, yeah. put in the right hands and, and what you want to focus on with that ship 
like you know you can be able to make those cargo runs and you can participate in pirating right but if you're not a very good pirate probably, it's still not like the end all be all pirate ships too you know if you're not very good you're probably you just, you're still get smacked around but you know you can okay. really take advantage of a lot of options with the, with the cutlass with i that, see i see it as the poor man's connie basically the smaller connie that's <laughs> kind of how i see it it's yeah. a little more nimble though but <laughs> right yeah exactly. with that in mind what what is your suggestion for a pilot who has taken a uh, cutlass out into the pu and getting fucked up all the time what should what should they focus on? Uh, avoid people l to p good um no no honestly, arena commander no in all honesty um get friends i mean either get friends pay attention to what's going on in the universe if you know that you know pay attention to chat sometimes just pay attention to what's going on yeah um, uh, like, uh, situational 100%. awareness yeah i like, 100 like, like percent that up the I mean, jack of all trades yeah, and and I, I I typically avoid combat, and I really have very few issues with griefers. I mean, I I pay, I and mean, if there's and the 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 people that are notorious trolls in the PU, they're usually very taunting in chat. So you know where they are, what they're doing. If if you see their name pop up, I mean, you just go somewhere else and avoid places like Cryastro, avoid Korea. Well, Cryastro um, doesn't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, was that going again? Um, hey, go go places where there aren't aren't a lot of other people, and I mean, I very rarely ever get attacked by anything other than pirates and, and NPCs, and then I just have to burn her away from them. Well, there's the perfect bit of advice right there from Kamikaze Dimas. Yeah, it's friends, so good. Don't it's come good. with We're that too, and I don't enjoyed it. Don't buy them. Perfect. <laughs> Fucking right on the money. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so Warwolf again yeah, is it time jack of all trades. he says um, or asks, is it time to separate the flight models so that arena commander and PU use different levels of depth or should PU move yeah. further away from sim in order to make it more accessible shoot I am so if, if I understood that correctly is it the arena commander should be like separate and how that flight model and how the combat works in there from the oh no. no 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 is, is that i mean is that no. what the question was that is sort of yeah okay no, no. um ac should simulate what the pu yeah, is absolutely and i know that can be hard to do because of the limited space and you know there is different tactics i'll, I'll understand that completely there's different tactics but it, you need a safe i don't i hate using safe space you need a place to where you can make those mistakes so when you do get in the PU, you can understand, okay, I shouldn't do this, I should do that. Well, That's that was right. Chris's oh. idea behind the really commander in the first place. Oh, everybody remember the cap capture the address? Oh, oh if only. well. If only. Well, it okay, might so, so one day. Follow up, follow up to that. Is, should the arena commander map be made slightly larger? That'd be sure. cool. It could be. Yeah. That'd be cool. I would like to see it larger. I would, I would like to see it, yeah. And multi-crew ships. If, if like we could have like a true battle royale mode like PUBG, and you have a map the, you know area the size of uh you know yila minus the planet like the, the the grid of yila minus the planet of course have the asteroid field mm -hmm. um that, that'd be really really cool do i think that's going to happen or a large right? large portion of the asteroid field or a large you portion know, of the with, asteroid with, field, with, yeah. with, 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 with you know be the ability to go above and you know below etc mm -hmm. would be a good things mm -hmm. so you, if you want to stay inside you can do that if you want to go outside you can do that or even empty space because uh let's face it space is big there's not you know not a lot of rocks yeah not a lot of rocks it's not always going to be celestials in space when you when you know when you encounter other players so wolf clarified he say he's saying that it's about arcade versus him because he hears a lot of complaints about the game actually getting too complicated and i would think that Chris has always said the game should be easy to uh, get started, but really difficult to master. And Low I agree with that. Entry, high skill ceiling. Right. So if you really want to get good, then you need to get good and fucking practice and talk to the people that are good and listen and, and do what they say. Oh, I mean, it's, I, it's, like it's I said, I, I know I put in a thousand hours. So you remember these put guys... In what they have say, saying is that we've wasted thousands of hours already trying to get here. We can tell you to how to get there faster, so that's why you need to listen to them. You can right. if you choose, waste thousands of hours to get to the same level. Why a lot we of those hours also 
also it's it's not just knowing what to do it's also developing the muscle memory it's a huge portion mm -hmm. are you ambidextrous well yeah we use dual joysticks yes that's not what i meant but okay <laughs> Dual joysticks for the win. <laughs> yeah, with your left hand. So what do you ask? That's I that's can. what I gathered from it. I do. Right. I try not to, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> this went a whole other way. It always mm. does. But getting, I guess getting back to Werewolf's thing about you know the arcade versus sim, I don't have an answer for that. At the end of the day, it needs to be fun, and that's what matters. Sim. I think I, I think I the, the the one thing the one thing that like AC does that I think. To what XLB said earlier is that with the PU like test like testing wise like you know combat and getting into those kinds of situations when you factor in all the other bugs and stuff that you have to combat whether that's your ship spawning properly or waiting on your insurance to claim or desync or even just finding somebody who can't you know be in the engagement you know that's why a lot of people who like that kind of gameplay prefer the AC environment because it is more of a controlled bubble and you can you can really start to kind of get a feel for how those engagements are where a lot of times in the and how the PU is currently not just from a gameplay standpoint, but from a bug and incomplete standpoint in, in, in its development, it, it cannot be a very good test bed for kind of getting a good, a good pulse on, on what's going on. So Arena Commander is a really fast way to get to the endorphin rush, and if you get kicked out or lose something, <clears throat> so it's I mean, very short time I, I back love, to the endorphin I love, rush. I, I love your condescending tone, but no, that's not the point. No, the point. <laughs> that's all we <laughs> have here is condescending. I notice. I notice. But wow. I, that's all. That's all Tio's got. Um, the, oh! the, the point is that uh, <laughs> the, the, the point the point is that like that's why like you know they said that they didn't want to spend a lot of resources on Arena Commander, but I also feel like that's a big reason why also combat has kind of went the way it has too, um, I, because that that environment was initially created to kind of help get that balance and nail that flight mechanic in. And if you know forty Squadron Forty Two is going to release next year, they have to they have to finally start to kind of kind of nail that nail a lot of these issues down when it comes to the flight model and the gunnery and the ship balancing and the combat and how engagements will work so you know it, it just uh, it seems like we, we spun wheels for quite a bit here <clears throat> i think that they're super in tune with the fact that squadron 42 hinges on a couple of things and the flight model is probably the pinnacle of squadron 42 fps ai and ship ai okay that needs some work and shit too but if you go into squadron and you don't have a fun time flying it, you are not fucking giving CIG another nickel. And that's not from the people that like stupid people like me who have invested an astronomical amount of money into this project. But for the guys who bought the $45 game package, when squadron 42 episode two comes out, they're not buying it. They're just not fucking buy and they're never going to come into PU because they're going to go, this game sucks. So, well, and, yeah. and it's people telling their friends that like, man, I had a great experience or I had a Experience. Exactly. And some when people are going to have a shitty experience mm -hmm. because they're going to be resistant to learn, right? Because most games nowadays are, are very low skill ceiling. They're, they're very dumbed down. Yes. 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 It's so, the lowest common denominator. Which is also exactly. what Chris doesn't want. Exactly. So, you know, the, this is why you see this bullshit all the time. And I fucking hated it when I first started seeing it. You know, uh, Sir Belial used to tell me all the time, get good, Juntao. And he fucking shoot me right in the face every fucking time that cocksucker, you know, but it's true. Get good. Practice. Take it on the chin, man, and fucking suck it up. If if you want to play combat, you have to get good or <laughs> avoid it. That's right. your choice. Well, and, that, and that's kind of like, or well, that's what I was thinking it. of earlier, though. though maybe, I'm good at avoiding it. Maybe the fact that combat will be more difficult than some people may have expected will will start making them look for other aspects in the game that they might find interesting which will at least make sure that not everybody is doing combat all the time and maybe some of the other roles may be under under manned you know did you There's know not that when the majority of people don't want to do combat already according to innovus in chat well that's the poll yeah, mo yeah. most yeah. most I mean, people you, don't really want to explore right. but the problem with that is exploration is going to lead to combat Dangerous, yeah. so if you think you're probably it's, gonna do it, everything it, it, all the time anyway. Statist statistically, with the size of the verse and the number of players, it's mostly gonna be uh, 
PV, PVE as opposed to PVP. Sure. Um, so that, that's why most of us are hoping, okay, well, if you're going to go into dangerous space, you're either going to get unlucky if you hit another player, or if you really want to be careful, then take an escort. I mean, dangerous space is dangerous for a reason. And if you're exploring uh, in un unexplored space, then it's going to be dangerous. So but that's, 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 that's where we're coming into the balance. You have the option, like we should think that they will go with is the you will have the ability to get away if you plan that's, ahead if you pay attention if for. you are using your scanners etc yeah. so yeah. that's well and, and 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 that's a and that's a very important thing there I and mean, you you can't just be an idiot when you're off in, in dangerous space i mean you, you had best be paranoid as fuck and totally be on your scanners paying attention if you see a blip and 30 kilometers away or you know 100 kilometers away or what 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 whatever the the furthest distance your scanners can can detect it if you see something get the hell out i mean head the opposite direction before they get close to you and if you're in and if you're in an exploration ship you should have better scanners than somebody in a fighter or a cutlass or something that's well, you know you just out see them before they see other. you for sure yeah I and mean, that's i mean that's that's what i'm in, in intimating so be careful when you're out there i mean if you see somebody, head the other way, and avoidance is uh, the the surest way to um, to survive. I I agree one hundred percent on that. I gotta ask the next question. Oh, well, uh, I, I see a comment yeah. in the chat, Mad Max. The scanners don't work against I stealth craft. That's yeah, gonna be yeah. gameplay. Mm. Organic. Yeah. You will be able to fire. invest money into scanners that will be more adept at discovering things that are trying to remain hidden you will sacrifice something for that capability they will That's be more expensive be the, that will be the meta of <clears throat> star citizen how you kit your ship they keep saying it how you kit your ship you get these bitchin scanners you know what they'll probably suck a lot of power or they'll they'll do something Com competition grade a scanners you want to if if you want to get through somebody somebody's stealth more likely and, and you still and you still just have to be super alert or have like the highest rated NPC at scanning that you can possibly find. Or a friend. And, and some friends. Mm -hmm. And some <laughs> friends, yes. So I'm going to ask this question. War will ask Realm, has Realm started light, lightening his hair or is it the new conditioner <laughs> reflecting his light more than I remember? It's the no. new webcam. <laughs> no, well, it's, yeah, it's probably that and the fact that this lamp is really warm light so if i turn it off you probably see i'm still brown as fuck you know he takes vitamin e supplements so his hair <laughs> goes a little bit faster than everybody else's because remember he cut all that shit off at one and it's coming back Not and who long. thought there would be like a hippie classical violinist in fucking star <laughs> citizen managing a radio station <laughs> on a talk show on a sunday how do these things happen? Managing, yeah, just I'm just here. Not giving a fuck. No, he manages. We we have discussions all the time. And he says, I don't give a fuck. Those are those that's his stock. What are we gonna do about this, Robert? I don't fucking care. <laughs> Burn it down. <laughs> Let's see. So I think we uh answered uh third to last question so we we'll, should can ask the last one from warwolves do you think it's a good idea to change the fight model while the game is still in alpha or do you think the current fight model has been fully established after four plus year and will estrange the current player base they don't like Which the way it plays in squadron 42 <laughs> we answered the question they don't like no, the I, way it plays yeah. in squadron 42 probably yeah there should be changes but there I mean, there also should be an Should avenue to change back so i like i don't mind experimenting with different ideas of flight models as as long as um development can see that the new changes of the flight model is not being well received and um it's basically regress back to the yeah previous. exactly or and and you know they can remain open-minded enough that the community is not receiving the new flight model well and then change back to what they had but can, can I ask which part of the community should they listen to? The most vocal part or everybody? Evocati. 
That's when... Because uh, uh, they'll be uh, testing uh, this stuff uh, first. This right? guy has things to say about Eva Cotty. No, no, no. no, no <laughs> they should listen to those who have invested the most money. How about that? I, I, I'm, I, I'm against I, that. I, I'm against I, that. I, yeah. I just, no. I, I, I'm up there with you guys on that, and I don't think that they should listen to any anybody over somebody else at the, the broadest um, part of the community. Take the feedback, weigh it, balance it, and make their own decision. Yes, mm -hmm. I I, think I would argue that whoever makes whoever makes the best objective argument, they should listen to no. more. No, I, no, I don't know. Here, here's not, my thing on that. Not really more, but see, I wait, wait, wait. I see a no. What's wrong with you know a, a, a reasonable because they don't, based argument? If, if, if that goes based on your own perspective, yeah. it's your if own they, perspective. It, Right. If th that group represent the most part, most of the players. Yes, I agree. If they don't, then no. Yeah. I, because I, there's there's such a broad spectrum of, of this community that has so many different interests, so many different preferences. I and mean, you may want to play a certain way, you may want to fight a certain way, and there's other people that may have a very very well reasoned argument to be exactly the the opposite of yours. And I and they need to take your your viewpoint and their viewpoint and all the others and weigh them to see okay well it, you have some good points they have some good points we're going to incorporate that into what we believe is the best model mm -hmm. say so, well what oh, they're that, going to do that, that that's a great argument. the we're best gonna, ideas from the community from the separate communities yeah. okay that's yeah. what they're going to do they're going to put the flight model out there they're going to let you fuck with it they're going to gauge the feedback they're going to tune it they're going to gauge the feedback they're going to tune it they're going to test it they're going to gauge the feedback they're going to tune it and this will go on for a little while now hopefully we find a happy medium in there you know most well, of, most, most people agree that it doesn't seem right that the ships have as much lateral and vertical thrust as they do compared to their forward thrust. And we can't increase forward thrust that much, maybe a little bit, but uh, not to compensate for the amount of lateral and vertical thrust that they have now. So what's the option? They're just going to lower the lateral and vertical thrust a little bit, maybe increase the forward thrust a little bit and see how the ships perform. And they will adjust it, you know, they will t lower it a little bit and then see, maybe we'll have to adjust it a little bit up or a little bit down. They will find that medium as they go along and test it. Uh, now, I can use myself as an example. One of the things I hated in all the current version, except the version, I don't know which one, where we were sliding all over the place, I actually had way more kill ratio when things were sliding because my brain says that I have, when I do this, I should be sliding. That's more. That's more sim. That's more what I expect to happen. It, it's what I'm expecting to happen. So it uh, allows me to f foresee it further into the future what's going to happen, what the other ship is going to be yeah, capable instincts, of doing. Yeah. If that makes sense. So for me, that's better. And uh, but for somebody that's really fast, more agile, uh, back and forth with six degrees and freedom is way better. And I and I'm not there and that probably never well, will be right and i'm saying you could have both too you could have both like mm -hmm. there's some ships that'll slide more and there's some that'll, that will be more responsive mm -hmm. <laughs> so i'm thinking fair. a happy medium is somewhere where we need to be where i get to slide the fuck away and i can expect your ship to slide a little bit less but still slide but you will have a little bit more 60 degree of fear of them i don't know that how, how do you know what xeon technology well, they, they, like actually, they, they, they actually talked about on the, on, on the RTV um, that, that specifically, like like the car 2 all because of it, its thruster placement, it's going to be tremendously more of a six degree of free ship because of the thrusters. Be, yeah, exactly. yeah. So, I, so the, I, they they address that very specifically in uh, in the RTV. Uh, I just watched a couple of hours ago. Um, so I, I I think it's it's going to be very interesting to see how how the new model develops for atmospheric flight, for space flight, and then I mean there may be some advantages to having a ship like the Car to All, which will finally is Car to All owners it's, happy. It's, a, it's an alien years. ship. It shouldn't it shouldn't behave like an alien space or a human spacecraft. It should characteristically fly different. And no, but, you should, you, but you should should have the same barrier for 
whatever G they said in game, that should that's gonna be the dim well. You know. I would say to if a it's, certain if extent, it's twelve, if, 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 it, if, if, it, if it stops if it from flying the way that it should, then no. I would say then you have to make some some gamey some gamey balance changes. Well, I'm I'm just saying the G whatever G they said as the standard should apply for all ships. There shouldn't be a difference between this ship and that ship. Well, yes and no, because if it's completely yeah, why? then you have to have some wiggle room to take shit to. outside the reality for yourself to make it fun. I get what Dupes is saying, but you know, for the most part, I agree with you that there needs to be a fucking threshold set somewhere. And right now, well, it just seems. Oh, sure. Unreal. Are we talking about the, the human, like on a physiological level, yes. or are we talking about the ships? No, the no, no, physiological. Human. Where yeah, you think, black out or right. red out. Yeah, I think yeah. that's different from how the ships actually perform. I mean, the the physiological G forces that somebody can can withstand mm -hmm. are are going to be similar, but the the way that those G forces act on you and how your ship is moving are going to be different because the like the 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 car have much more directly lateral thrust like we have now because its thrusters can do that. Whereas current ships, and when you're turning and changing your 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 direction of of thrust and then you apply and that's where you're going to get your g-forces so and you still have that same human barrier how it, it applies in different ships is is going to uh, Dirk, affect you differently Dirk c said in chat but does the new flight model actually allow for that do so like, yeah it does they can they can make these ships perform however they want to like mm -hmm. well, with the new tool you know, that they with the new yeah. tool and why, they can iterate why, fast why why would you have a difference there? I, I'm think it's think it's better to put the G forces at a level where, um, because Gian physiology might not equate to human physiology. Yeah, but you're going to be a human using the ship. See, there's a fundamental difference. Like, there's a fundamental difference. Is I would like for me personally, like, and then this is just my perspective on the way like ships should fly. I would rather focus on getting ships to feel differently, and then factor in the G on top of it, as opposed to using the G to then factor in how the ship should, how the ship should behave. Per, like, no, 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 I, I the think ship I, should behave know, whatever, you know, that's, that the ship should be, go way above what the human can do. You okay, just black it out. Yeah, and I, I, I can agree with that. Absolutely. Right. No, I agree with that as well. And when you black out, not when you partially read out, but when you completely read out or black out, the stick, you lose the stick and yeah. it goes in the direction you agree with that as well, right? So yeah. once you get control again, you get to move the stick again. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, if if you let's say you're coming top to an asteroid, 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 and you you go go as hard as you can and it's way over the G, and as long as you keep that in absolutely not redding out or blacking out completely, you will be able to save. But if you go completely over, the stick will just go back again and you hit the asteroid. That's my my point is that. It's a penalty for going over, and that's you lose control of the ship. Okay. I'm now, offended I that Luce, you're all offended. Fuckers. I, I think <laughs> Moose can actually probably elaborate a little bit more on this just because of his experience in real life with his profession and everything. But I mean, from my understanding too, is you know, a human can sustain a certain amount of G's, but then you can actually G lock before that by just sustaining a certain amount of G's. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I'm just gonna use some arbitrary numbers here. If you know I hit five Gs and then I keep that five Gs, eventually I'm gonna black out. Um, sure. Even after though a certain of time. after a certain amount of time, yet I could hit a threshold prior to the, or you know, like I could hit maybe seven so Gs, a period of time. but I can't care, hold it for a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. And with let's say Cartual or Gion or ships or whatever, we should be able to go well beyond that, as you said. Sure. But then it's up to the player to actually manage those Gs, to manage your G force yep. discipline. And that's I where I think skill level should come into play too. I agree. That's that's why you have the 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 fading colors that gives you that control yeah. over when 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 where's the barrier? When do I lose control? Sweet. Uh, I when do I? That's something I think CIG will just have to figure out. Yeah. Or I mean, again, like I said, we got more of a medical professional than yeah. me. The like the one thing I could like see that I would like to see potentially. And this should just be a quality of life is that they actually have much like how you get out of your ship and you're walking around you have your vital stats mm. lower left hand side i can't remember if it's lower right hand side but you have That's your left. vitals um on screen if uh and but then as soon as you get into the cockpit you don't see your vitals anymore which um, is stupid yeah yeah that, that. that would be, and that would be a hard number because then you can measure uh you know 
based off your heart rate and your SpO2 monitor, how much oxygen is or how much oxygen is getting to your brain. Um, and once you once you reach a certain level, that's when you black out. So incorporating you know the vitals on your HUD, boom, you have a hard number right then. So it's not up to interpretation between the amount of uh, gray or black on your screen. Well, sure. We all agree, though, that the presentation of information and the current implementation, those are a lot of big words, is lacking. Mm -hmm. yeah. The way it is laid out on your HUD leaves a lot to be desired. So they, they talked about reorganizing all that shit, too. So we'll see what they come up with that, because you don't need you shouldn't be looking down at the bottom of your monitor to see vital information. All the vital information should be in your line of sight. Yeah, it should be at least at the very least in your peripherals, in your immediate right. peripherals from the center of the screen. I mean, so, there's going to be a lot of information, but hey, it's a futuristic game. Win. Well, and another thing that they need to to figure out is uh, HUD UI customization and being able to move elements and shit like that. Every I, I other fucking good game thing. does it. And pinning oh, targets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pinning targets. <laughs> I bring back pinning targets. <laughs> no, no, no. I actually, I actually just talked about this in some feedback. Um, if you guys remember, I think it was early 2.0, and even before 2.0, the HUD that we had, I loved it. You could see your gun mm -hmm. overheat. You could see ships. Mm -hmm. You could see all that. Just I want to be able to take it from the MFD, put it on my HUD. If I don't mm -hmm. want it on the HUD, I want Preach. to be able to take it off. Preach. Exactly. <laughs> No, I agree, a hundred percent. So, and if you want to know, your, like, your, if your your power and your heat and all that shit, exactly. you should. Yep. But what you, you want, need to be not necessarily a, like, because like, if you're just no uh, a data cutters. runner, you're gonna want to know what your engine yeah. levels are. You don't care about your right. weapons. You don't care about your weapons. But you know, as a combat pet, I want to know my heat of my weapons. I want that up on my HUD. Mm -hmm. So I want I want my it's... thruster and the, you know the the heat generated by my thrusters and my weapons and stealth yeah. and signatures. Yeah, I mean, it should count. <laughs> Oh my uh, God. Oh, here we go. Here we, go. we got it right here, don't we? That's Poor Zane old. and his team. That is pretty. Oh, funny. look at that. That's it a Left hand side. You can. I mean, it's kind of fluctuating all over the place I, there because it's in 50. The pilot's moving like this. Mm -hmm. I missed so, that. So, what version was that again? This is pre 2.0. Yeah, this is like one point. Well, I can tell by that. No, there's nothing. There's no patch between 1.3 and 2.0. First it's, off, uh, that, October 2014. No, that that's actually point eight. Or the yeah, first that, iteration. Really early on. I think that's yeah, 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 yeah because the targets are really big. Point, 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 point so, eight yeah. actually had uh, auto convergence with gimbals, so you actually had auto tracking. Ugh. <clears throat> Which is what you want back? No, no. I can't tell if you're trolling right there. Me? <laughs> no, <laughs> Gentel. No. Yeah, this is point eight. I can tell by the lock signature. It's either point eight or point nine. But the, still, that HUD. I mean, to me, that's really sexy. But if we can mm. customize that from our MFDs or we have presets or anything like that, I'd be really happy. Mm -hmm. You know, I was really looking forward to some slaughter today, but you guys have been fairly reasonable, so it's been hard. <laughs> oh. I think there's this there's this sort of blanket um misconception. I, I, yeah or yeah misconception that there's a blanket ide ideology attached to the combat community uh and th there's some in the combat community that, community that probably don't um give us a good name in terms of how they go about critiquing CIG and other members of the community we start so, dropping um, what was like that <laughs> If if they're going from org to org trying to name drop, you know who they are. I I'm not going to name names, no. but I, oh, there I'm are some name. people. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, if it's you, you know who you are. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because you've been here name dropping, we know who you are. But it's that, uh, that, that's both sides of the aisle. Renegade. Let's let's be fair. But I think we're closer in what we want then we're apart. It's just that we have slightly different take on what's fun, first of all. That's, that's understandable. Mm -hmm. What's fair. And so that's the balance that CIG will have to come up with and find a way. And not only that, find a way that's going to be engaging for... I'm not a pleb in terms of the scope of the game, but in some aspects of the game, I will be a pleb. But there will be people that will be pleb just over the whole scope of the game. And it has to be fun for them as well. So we have there has to be a balance where they can feel that they're actually having a 
they're having fun in the game. They're not just being, you know, outmatched all the time, uh, losing their shit all the time. They're, you know, they're in there to get that in Fort Dorf and rush just as everybody else here. So it's uh, just like me and Genta. We get our kicks the same way like you do, just different ways. Cool. I don't know. I only enjoy proving everybody else wrong, <laughs> which is not that difficult to do sometimes. Yeah, this is, and this was pre 2.0. Mm -hmm. We're going to see it here in a second. That, uh, that, that HUD was still good through um, uh, December, 2000, December 2015. That's, that's the Avenger. That looks, like, that looks like 1.3. That is the Avenger, and yes, yeah, that's what I said. It's just pre two point so this is right before they launched uh, in December twenty fifteen. They, 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 they still that they still had that in in uh, two point Yeah, and, sure, um, because they didn't they, change they did, it yeah. Yeah. from this point. But it was like right. two five, I want to say. They kind of like we're gonna do MFDs. Oh, but look at look at look at his roll rates and yeah. stuff already. Mm -hmm. Still, still responsive. That's that's one point three, and it freezes a lot. <laughs> Well, I mean, right. that's given it's old explosions. <laughs> Oracle effects came away. But that was definitely really enjoyable. So, mm -hmm. I'm going to, from uh, 2.0. Wrap this up. Yeah, all the questions have been asked. Entered. Good job, Warwolf. You carried the <laughs> carried, carried the questions. Still say Pong on MFDs. <laughs> He's gonna kill me. Hey, those guys in single person, uh, single seater fighters need something to do on long, long quantum trips too. Yeah, I, but I, I really I've got like. A, I got a pool table. Right, and or maybe a piano one day. I and, and a pool. really like the idea and a hot tub maybe. Um, the idea of taking elements of your MFDs and placing them as uh, transparencies on your uh, HUD yeah. is a really good idea. Yeah. You know, that way you could pick and choose what information is important to you based on what it is that you're doing. I so agree 100%. that would be really, mm -hmm. really good. So somebody call Zane Bien and tell him that we just created more work for him. I'm sorry. Yeah. He's got his fucking hands full right Why now. Why just so. got delayed into the year? Uh, well, you know what? If it makes it better, if it makes it better, that's fine. Here's, okay a, that. here's a really good point about that, right? Delay, 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 delay. Blah, blah, blah. Bitch, bitch, bitch. Everybody, bitch, bitch, bullshit, bitch. Bullshit, I want bullshit. my fucking game now, right? Okay. So, Squadron Forty Two was delayed, but what was the delay worth it? Yes. When you watch the way that the art changed and the way that, like, we saw the character interacting with the guy at the console station. Uh, and they showed this bit. <clears throat> the NPCs didn't always auto track where your player was and the player could be anywhere in the scene. Right. And they showed this bit where the fucking NPC, if you were in the floor, the NPC Immersion. would look you in the eyes in the floor. That's huge. That wasn't there. We talked about it last week with Joran. The the morphing aspect of facial characteristics. Mark Hamill's before and after. Right, all of yeah. it, it all adds up to something. Is does the weight suck? The weight fucking sucks, dude. It's so bad. It's like painful if you're a fucking star citizen addict. It's painful. It sucks. Right, and but and most worse. of us get it. But but as you see these things that they put out, does it or does it not seem worth the weight? One hundred percent. I would have to say yeah. It well, sucks, was, but yeah. I was there starting <laughs> <for> three point four. <laughs> <laughs> no pain, no gain, this Mary says. So I agree. All right, where can you find everybody? I think we know that most of the time. What Jordan we've done last week? I think it was Twitter. Jordan underscore sc. That's right. Yep. Yep. Bar citizen dot sc and, and bar citizen dot sc. Check out your local bar citizens. Next week, it's going to be Calgary, Salzburg, Austria, and Abu Dhabi in the UAE. Yeah, right. We actually have a little widget. Well, it doesn't show right now, but when it when we're on the auto DJ scene, Nine. it has a little ticker in the in the bottom that shows uh, all the recent uh, bar citizens. Just as an overview, you know, you can mm -hmm. 
And you, did you listen to those names? That's all over the fucking world. It's all over the world. Yeah. Yep. It, every weekend. It's and happening this, in Florida, dupes. Why isn't this program produced with Florida using Fars FOIP yet? Citizen. Well, Warwolf. Go. I tried running because Star Citizen during so this. so much effort. <laughs> I just want to sit my lazy ass in this chair and right? talk shit. <laughs> Is that what we all want to do? Yes. That's what we do all day. Well, it's doable, but um, I mean, I've seen uh, what was it, the Redacted podcast do it once. But you need it's doable. Gonna, it's you gonna, need it's you need crash people that know what they're doing. I don't that, that too. Yeah. Right yeah. Well, it's it's still doable. I've seen some some people demo the the technology, and I was like, whoa, I can never get it to do it that well because when you, when you see some people demo it and they're speaking, it's it's almost like it, then it almost looks like the character is speaking. You can what, what you're hearing is coming from the character, and that is impressive. Now you need to calibrate it very well if you wanted to achieve that. And and it does, just doesn't do that for me yet. Not I don't know how these people do that. It's just like ridiculously well done. I mean, well done. Maybe they were uh, given the uh, face work good camera lighting ahead whatever. of time. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I Lighting's don't know. a bitch. Lighting well, is a bitch. You, 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 can, you can run programs that run delays on the sound. Same thing that when you record, you can delay image or sound. Mm. So it's it's not something that's easy to do in a setting like this. That's what you guys need to do is get on Dupesome's ass and get him <sighs> into the bar citizens in the community and shit. Because sometimes, just sometimes, he does have really good points to make if you can get him out. You have to oh, sure. pull them out of him sometimes because he's staring at his phone and he's probably looking at Rocket League stats right now or something. Some sports you know? crap. Right? Who's that? The, he's, still, he's still a young man, so young man for bed. always sit with I their, their phone in their hand. How <laughs> long we get? Do we even need to ask where to go find you or do they not want to find you? Florida, USA. <laughs> that's good <laughs> keep bugging him keep bugging him he has a twitter it's at dupesums but he never looks at it. no I don't I know because I <laughs> tagged you and you didn't respond <laughs> no, you just... moose you too whatever um, tell me how uh, what huh? what are you doing what, what are you looking for where yeah. can people find well, you you look like your bullshit. streamers but uh where can they find my bullshit okay uh twitch.tv forward slash xlb underscore sc um i do like to try to teach people and and you know i haven't really been streaming lately but in 2.6 i was very dedicated at it um i do giveaways and everything like that so guys if you want some free shit i'm i'm giving it out and uh yeah, if you want to learn Blows. come chat we'll hang out I want to do a drunken uh, citizen. You kill me, I take a shot. I'm I plan on getting completely fucked up. So, lol. <laughs> they think that if is he, that the right page? I think he has a girlfriend or he's married because no single guy has that many pillows on his bed. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> there's eight fucking pillows on that bitch. That's no, a good point. There's, there's seven. That one is one pillow. Oh. Yeah. I will disable that for now, but yeah. I'll, I'll have you know that I made my bed just for the show. Very interesting. <laughs> so you're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. We don't want to turn this into another Shane episode. I know, right? Right. You look more aerodynamic. What? You hey. me? Yeah, yeah. The okay, beard so with... looks more aerodynamic. Was that? Dupe does with a beard. Hmm? No, it says do real gym yeah, time after it. I'm not sure who he's talking to, but whatever. I look more aerodynamic. So, uh, I don't understand. We're we gonna go now. Fuck. So we talked about XLB does moose stream. No, no, no. no. If you want to get in contact with me, you can just message me on Discord or the Star Citizen base. Space right. dash moose. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'm going to try to get him into some video creating. Um, but he, again, he's my wingman and vice versa. Yeah. We, if you need to get a hold of him, right through me. He's always on my stream. That's that's yeah, that's that's true. Excel, if Excel you're trying to get a hold of me, you can just go. You can just get on, you know, Belmont's uh, stream or his Twitter, and then he'll let me know. Excel Excel B, if, you're, if you're doing that whole sh shot of somebody, somebody kills you, right? Well, you're a pretty good pilot, so you may not take that many shots. So you got to you got to reverse your inputs, right? <laughs> so have your strafing on your right hand and have your pitch roll on your on your left. Challenge accepted. I'll do it. Yeah, there you go. Not, and then take a shot every time somebody kills you. That's how you gotta do it. Well, let, let, let's let's talk about that maybe <laughs> like depending on three four what it kind of comes to, but I'm I'm up for that. <laughs> so again, it's just about having fun, guys. It, it's I, I, I do think like Moose said earlier, there's a big disconnect with like the PvP community and just mm -hmm. there's like this negative vibe. Really, we're just yeah, pretty good sure guys. We just want to see content from everything so mm. just, just have some fun just competitive that's what it comes down to no uh, it, it does but again we just want to have fun it's all yeah. uh, what, what are we here for a game to have fun so he's just trying to bait you because they need targets <laughs> <laughs> that's, what we do. that's why i always tell people i'm bad seal, <laughs> seal club and that's why we just tell people we're, we're not that good seal club they can fight us well, um, yeah. Well, what anyway? Uh, you can find um, well, you can find the rest of us on on our base discords really because we're radio, base radio crew. So the ones with the yellow names, that's 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 and the orange names, that's us. Uh, the that is Discord. The base at SC. Still get the invite there if you're not on there yet. But yeah, you, what else? Um, what? if you have not seen it. Go to the base.sc. There is a uh, new crew member. Um, Max? Ma right? Mac. Just Max. Mac, M A C. New crew member that's going to start doing uh, blogs for the base.sc. Oh, and his one. first blog is the uh, Effective Content Creators on CIG, something I don't have the title memorized but it's a really good breakdown of the influence that content creators should should not and do or do not have on the game's development it's a pretty yeah, good article go read it so go read it and give some feedback and shit and that's probably going to be a regular thing so bookmark that page give us your track get uh what was i going to say give us your something tweet it oh your give us your clicks uh <laughs> go to the base.se forward slash store you could buy a fancy shirt like this. It actually, let's see. If I a shirt. Oh, it has a back to. Oh, right. It, it does. Yeah. I actually designed those. <laughs> I didn't even know. Our citizen motherfuckers. <laughs> Go buy a shirt. Support fucking this hell. fucking channel. We got a Patreon. Support actually, this channel. Uh, you know what we do with that shit? We buy shit and give it to you. They turn out better cool. than I thought, it's though. Yeah. It's pretty good. It's not bad. Buy a shirt, fuckers. Yeah, it's your Go Yeah. Do it now. You don't need a ship. You need a shirt. Can anybody get those Bar Citizen shirts, Joran? Is there a store for that? Um, at actually, the patches. A lot of the local uh, groups have their own patches. Um, so find your local group. Was that an iron on? Yep. Oh, yeah. You can do that too. Back in the eight. Yeah. Iron. Then that way everybody can put a patch on the shirts. There's but a lot I of cool think, patches. Out there. Let's see. I was just looking. You know, the Bar Citizen website doesn't have a shop. Play the sermon. Play the sermon. Yeah. And not on, not on itself. Max. Yeah, no, it's it's all it's all local to the local groups. Like New Jersey yeah. has some good patches. St. Louis has some good patches. Texas has some patches. So hey, it's all it's all local for your your local uh, bar citizens. Okay, Dupsons, we'll do the sermon and then we'll go. Yes. I still have it. Thank I, you. Uh, that's why we stayed for an extra hour. Right? Right? Because you, 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 you are all you are all about to be indoctrinated into the Church of Chris Roberts. It's a wonderful <laughs> place to be. All are welcome. Chris yeah. Roberts, our Lord all and Savior. Mm -hmm. Here's the Savior. Preach. So we'll uh we'll uh yeah, we'll be back next week, another round table of us course of course, obviously on every Sunday. Uh the rest of the shows uh, I don't even find them. Miss Hearts has a show on Wednesday now, I think, a new thing that give me Bring no. What is it called? Fuck. I want my eighties. I want my eighties. Yeah. yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So find it at the base. Actually, there's a schedule there. So 
You want to check that out? It's pretty cool. That we're getting those. If you want to spin tunes, we're looking for help. By the way, sure. if you'd you like to spin tunes or do a talk show or just come on here and act like an asshole, <laughs> they let you do it. Kill you don't have enough of those yet, though, right? Gentiles proof. I'm proof. Oh. It's doable. Let's go. <laughs> See you next bye week. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you all for Thank coming. You. Thank you for the guests. Dear miners, Dear miners traders, bounty hunters, dog fighters, captains, and pirates, may I take this opportunity to welcome you here tonight on behalf of the Church of Chris Roberts. It is wonderful, as always, to see all the familiar faces of our pilots and all the special backers of the great Master Race Congregation. I know that you all join me tonight in extending a heartfelt, sincere welcome to all our new pilots and listeners who may be backing with us tonight. <laughs> welcome, space sailors. Let the milk of the way guide you, and may the Roberts himself beareth to you jump points and exotic locales. May Roberts himself and the Holy Concierge offer you the opportunity to grow in your ever-ship modules. We trust that this transmission today will fuel your quantum drives and encourage newcomers to dump said wallet into the pockets of St. Chris Roberts himself. May your bounties be lifted and your UEE reputation cleared. May you feel comforted in the light of L-T-I as Roberts himself reveals his plans for Alpha, Beta, and Launch. May you be inspired and inspired to become active in the recently rolled communal hope and become involved in one of the many organizations that the citizen of the star has to offer. Be encouraged with St. Chris Roberts' glorious words. <laughs> I don't want to build a game. I want to build a universe. <laughs> may St. Chris Roberts bless you and keep you. And may the LTI light continue to shine upon you. I support the monkeys. Do you? Check out the base. 24-7 online radio. Oh, yeah! Visit us at thebase.sc. They're professionals.